Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, folks. Got another good show for you with Jeremy Pratch, who is the ringleader behind Flat Out Friday. So before we get into it, let's hear from our sponsors, and then we'll get right into the episode. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets has been my helmet of choice for the last four years. I personally dig the Ghost Bandit the most, but really leaning towards rocking the Mod Bandit for the next year of riding. Really not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. If you guys want to head on over to SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, you can check out the models and finishes and visor options and see what fits you the best. And also, don't forget to give my guys a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Lexan is my go-to for not only my Bluetooth system, the FT4 Pro, on my helmets, but now my wireless charging solution on the road as well with their WPC QI wireless charger. This is a water-resistant wireless charger for the Ram Mount X grip phone holder. This easy-to-set-up system uses a battery tender-style plug for easy install and will only set you back $64.95 with a two-year unlimited warranty. You can also grab yourself a Lexan WPC and Ram X mount for $110 at lexan-moto.com. And at checkout, drop the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And don't forget to give my dudes Lexan a follow on Instagram at lexanmoto. Check them out. With my recent 131 crate engine install, my Thundermax ECM was able to get me an extra 136 horsepower and 146 foot-pounds over the 124 and 131 projected HD numbers with their tuner. The computer is constantly tuning my bike to the elevation and weather conditions as I ride, which gives me the optimal performance all the time. I also run the Thundermax fan for the M8 Touring models, the oil cooler fan was a big help with my 114 and a must with the new 131 motor. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidsons covered and you can check out all these products at shoptmax.com and use the offer code FASTLIFE at checkout which saves you 10% off. And give these dudes a follow on Instagram at Thundermax EFI. I recently switched all my lighting on my Rogue Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of the looks and the improved visibility I get from the shark tooth headlight and I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offers 530 lumens of bright white running light which are the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of designs to add that finishing touch. And all products are plug and play. NAMS Custom Cycle Products since 1999 have been offering American made wiring products for all things V Twin, and Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA, backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at NAMSCustomCycleProducts.com and you can drop in the FL2020 offer code, which gives you free shipping on all orders over a hundred bucks. Check them out, guys. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded with in house dyno tuning and parts and accessories. Also, check out teamdreamrides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider. And if you're short on cash, you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products on TeamDreamRides.com. All you need is a job and a bank account. And while you're at it, give John and the team a follow at DreamRidesJohn on Instagram. Paint Huffer Metal Flake has been with our podcast since day one. And I've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now. And you can get started down this custom paint path as well with many must-have items for the custom paint process. Head on over to PaintHuffer.com and you can save yourself some coin by using FastLife21 offer code. And last but not least, you can get some inspiration by checking out all the amazing paint work created with Paint Huffer products at Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram. Once again, I'd like to welcome you guys back to the show. Got a great one today with Jeremy and uh, 
have to say it was a very uh, enlightening one for me, at least. And uh, I think we talked about a lot of things about like organizing and getting people together for events and things like that. So I uh, uh, really enjoyed this podcast, man. And I want to thank the guys at House of Harley for once again giving us the space and and helping me link up with guys like Jeremy to get these uh, episodes out for you guys. So don't want to drag this out too much longer. So here we are, Jeremy, Flat Out Friday. Let's go. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. I mean, I hate. I have more questions. I, I find people like yourself um, here. Just when you talk, get up close sorry, to the thing. Yeah, we're yeah. doing the sound check. Yeah, I'm going to shut this off because I don't know how to turn it down. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I find that people that have made their way in this industry, like yourself, that have like Danger Dan, people that entrepreneurs, I yeah. guess, for lack of yeah. a better word, and it's not even necessarily about the money. You're pushing this culture. Exactly. You're an important part of this culture. My, so I have some more questions for you, you know. Well, ask him, man. What, this is a podcast <laughs> we do. What, it's a good point you brought up because we're rolling, by the way. So just so it's you okay. know. Um, I'm, I think that it's my responsibility as somebody that works in the industry to also consider the culture of the motorcycle industry and where that's going and to do whatever I can to help progress that. Sure. You know, so if we have a bunch of fuckheads in the industry that have – dove it down it's if i wanted this to last and give it to the next generation i got to try to make it right you know and i got to also invest in understanding the people before me sure. you know the history of all these things and shit like that so sure and but i don't like to even use the word industry yeah i, mean, I guess i'm in it because it pays the bills yeah but just like you, it's a dirty word. Maybe you have to use, mm -hmm. but I'm much more interested in the culture, right? If exactly. I could just get, if I just had a million dollars, you know, I wouldn't have to kiss anybody's ass. Yeah, that'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, in conclusion, we appreciate the culture. Yeah, I do. Uh, and it 100%. takes it takes many different uh, people. It isn't just motorcycle riders. It's it's the music. It's the art that mm -hmm. goes with the fashion that yeah. goes with the movement. That's what makes it a culture. Mm-hmm. Well, I just made that up. I don't really know where I was going with it. No, I, dude, you're <laughs> right, man. It is that. It's, uh, you know, when you're growing up and you're a skateboard kid or, a, you know, maybe under my generation, uh, you might have been a punk rock kid or my, you know, I grew up in fucking rap. That was the most popular thing in, in the 90s whenever sure. I was starting high school and things like that. But you still felt kind of like an outcast. Sure. You know, in certain circles and things like that. and. You know, motorcycles seem to, it, it, it always seems to, no matter what you're into that's obscure as a kid, it seems to always funnel down to motorcycles as an adult. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think it's, I, I, I'm going to test that thesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to think about it. I got to test it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. If you're a jock, you know, if you grew up playing sports, you know, you might dabble into motorcycles, but it seems like more people they would just dabble in it like they'll get into a phase of motorcycling like whether it's the big wheel phase or the the tv chopper phase and then that you know when it kind of goes away then so does their their passion for motorcycling so i think the the those of us that it's like it's our culture it's who we are deep you know maybe i think that maybe it's just like the only family that we really ever identified with you know the the grease and gears kind of guys in the garage drinking beers and wrenching on bikes and you know being kind of uh, just gearheads, if, if if you will, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, you you you're uh, you're you're blowing my mind. I appreciate your perspective. I wasn't ready to be uh, perspected. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I was telling you downstairs, man. What was interesting to me about you uh, was like your like your ability to to organize and, and bring people together in something that has blown up over the last couple of years. I'm. I wouldn't say that I'm not a fan of flat tracking. I just don't know much about it. Sure, sure. And being so ingrained into the custom motorcycle culture uh, and not really growing up around any kind of dirt bike riding and things like that, I don't know much about it. And when you don't know, it's hard to appreciate things like sure. that. So, But I do appreciate the well, effort that you <laughs> have put in to make things yeah. like this happen. And I appreciate your, your knowledge of performance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, I worked, that's what's just interesting is we came to this table from mm -hmm. way different perspectives. I came in it not for motorcycling, for racing first, if mm -hmm. you will. I was, I was, I, 
I never really came to this town for a long time, this part of the town, but yeah. just a little bit west of here was uh, Hales Corner Speedway. And I had raced there for about five, six years, a uh, mm-hmm. low level stock car. Okay. Uh, and that r- racing, it was a terrible cultural experience. The culture of that flat track was, was horrific. Um, but I have great memories and I made some great friends from that. And I use that as a backdrop of what I can do to make racing. What can I do to make ra- that? Like, what can I do to extract all the bad out of that or all the good out of that and lose uh-huh. the bad out of that dirt racing culture? Mm-hmm. So then I got into motorcycles. So my knowledge is ju- is fairly new. I'm, it's only 10 years mm-hmm. that I've actually been into motorcycling. Well, everybody that's in motorcycles only been in it for fill in the blank. So it's to me, it, I've only been into, I've been into motorcycling for since 2004. Okay. Painted before that. So it's, you know, I like to say it's, it doesn't matter how long you've been in it. It just matters if you're in it or not. Sure. I just you don't want to get called out that, um, because you're using some pretty powerful words, and I, I and I don't want to get called out for yeah, but you know that guy has only it doesn't been matter here ten years, you know somebody that's been here two years can make a bigger impact on someone that's been here twenty years though. I I I appreciate your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you were listening to the uh, Danger Dan mm-hmm. uh, podcast, I didn't I don't usually listen to these when I'm done. I like yeah, to I don't like the stream of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just what am I going to do if I say something embarrassing? You got to live with it. So, trust me, I do that all the time. And I every time, sometimes I, you know, because when I go back and do a sound edit on these, yeah. I hear certain parts. I'm like, shut that off, shut that off. Find the the part where the other guy's talking and edit the audio on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't like listening to myself talk either, man. Sure, sure. You so know? you 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 edit this? I do not. I try not to okay. edit out anything. I try to correct the sounds. I mean, it's uh, like I'll leave that burp in there too. Um, I try to leave. I try to edit it so that it's not obnoxious to listen to in different settings. You know, like say if you're in your car, you don't want it to turn it all the way up. Sure. Or someone's got a hissing mic. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I try to edit out that so it's more palatable for everybody. Sure. You know. Sure. And so why are you here in Milwaukee? So Tommy, who you, I think you just met as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's from Texas originally, uh, down in Austin, and I'm from Dallas. And I bought my first FXR from him almost five years ago. Okay. And since then, we've kind of built a relationship. Uh, I've painted a few bikes for him down in Texas as far as the dealership, as well as at this dealership. And, um, you know, I was just, I think I might have said it on on the last podcast, but Tommy and the guys that used to work at the dealership he was, was a big part of bringing the performance Harley-Davidson culture. They gave us a hub in Texas to all, all this kind of misfit kids in the motorcycle industry mm-hmm. or motorcycle scene. Um, that Calby Harley Davidson that they worked at was the ones that were putting together little events mm-hmm. where the San Antonio, the Dallas, and the Houston guys could all come and kind of meet and not just be Instagram friends and shit. So when, when you say the perform, you, you, you talk about this performance as if it's a movement. It's definitely a movement. Great, because because I, I didn't, I, so I wanna, I wanna ask a little bit about that. Because people were performing for sure. Enhancing their performance. What hallmarks a movement as opposed to it being with there all along? That's a good point. And um, the thing is about this is that we, I think that we selfishly just stole performance mm-hmm. from things like the pro street era of motorcycle building, the racing area. And club style is kind of another way to put it. Okay. Uh, it's like that club from Cali style of bike setup. But that just doesn't, you know, people, like, they didn't like that word, you know. Performance Harley just sounded more cool. Sure, so sure. it's like, it's not that, that the, the the Harleys that we're doing are, are more performance-oriented than some of these monster, you know, things that Eric Buell was doing or these other people. It's just it's the word that we picked or the consensus picked this word, and that's fucking what it is. Sure, sure. You know? When, 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 would, it, when would you hallmark the movement, start of the movement, right? Who would be the... Uh, the big bang, big bang. It's kind of a weird one, man, because there's a lot of things that took place that I think uh, curated the beginning of it. Um, I would almost say that it was like a long process. You know, uh, I would say even things like Sons of Anarchy had something to do with it. You know, the TV show. So are we talking 2000s, early 2000s? I would, you know, I'm trying to find the best way to give it, give everybody I know that's been around the credit uh, and not like cut any important factors out of like what I think the movement started as, but you know, in California, the this style of motorcycle, the dying of the T-bars, 
the uh, FXR, mm-hmm. um, all that style is obviously was the club style for the California and different parts of the country. They'd also adapted to that as well. But then all the skateboard kids that used to ride skateboards in the late 2000s or the late 90s and early 2000s and the dirt bike guys started to evolve into the Dyna culture because it was kind of like the young guys culture in Cali. And I think it was also a lot to do with the TV show Sons of Anarchy, okay. which was the representation of the California mm-hmm, club mm-hmm. movement. And then a big factor was, I think, the unknown industries with doing wheelies mm-hmm. and, and having really nice bikes and being kids. Look, Whether they're 36 years old mm-hmm. at the time or not, I don't know how they old, old they are, but they look like 21, 25-year-old dudes out there riding wheelies on really, really nice Harley Davidsons. Sure. And that shit was appealing to the rest of the country. So all these different factors coming into play and young people, which Harley thinks that we don't have riding bikes, seems to look over the fact that there's this emerging culture of the Dinas, and then they're seeing that they want to do more than just ride them around the country or ride them around the town. So then they get involved in flat track is what it seems like. Sure, sure. And so it's like, to me, I, I'm getting off topic here, but I feel like everything that's naturally happen, happening seems like a, a, a course correction that it's doing it's on its own. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Everything that you just said, you could have just, instead of the word performance, you could have said hooligan. You know, it's the same. It's a good point. Well, history is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. From California, young kids. Uh, I, 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 hearing you, it's, it's, a, it's very humbling. I'm so immersed in this hooligan idea. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was, I just thought that was it. I just thought it was sportsters. Oh, you know, I didn't know that kids, I, 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 I realize it now. When you say yeah. it now, like, oh, my God, of course, how was I so blind to this, this movement, this performance movement, you know, on the, on the big bikes? Yeah. Well, I, I, I skipped over the, the, the sportsters on accident. But, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, that, sure, my first bike was a sportster, I'm man. sure there's, there's tons of crossover. We were, we're just painting with broad strokes. Yeah, exactly. But, but I, understand, I, I appreciate now what the performance movement is and so i just came back from sturgis and there was a large pocket of performance young uh high black socks <laughs> right unfortunately that that is you know the 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 fashion comes with the style of bike in a lot of aspects yeah you know what i mean and you know um it's it's i i it's just to be i mean nowadays we everything that happens we all make fun of it on facebook it becomes a or on instagram or whatever it becomes a meme sure it becomes a joke and it's funny but then sometimes people take it seriously. And no, I get know, it. Of, yeah. of course, I, I have no prejudice. I mean, I, we all got prejudices, yeah. but you know, I uh, you could make. I'm not. I mean, there's no disrespect in that in that uh, oh, yeah, comment sure. at all. And I, as hard as I am on people, I expect and I want it to be hard on me too. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, exactly. I rib my, I ride my friends hard, and I want them to uh, to ride me hard. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, okay. So I think I think I'm caught off here on this uh, performance movement. Now, now uh, this is a dumb question. I'm totally exposing my a- absolute ignorance to this performance. Also, if that's the broad heading under that family, is going to be uh, like stunt bike riding, mm-hmm. right? In that, um, which I've seen a boom for sure. Uh, in that all the sport bike people are switching over to do a, a wheelie on a bagger is pretty badass. Mm-hmm. Drag the trunk, exactly. <laughs> But th- th- that's your, that's that's your forte, right? That's that's your we- that's your world, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, yeah. not by it. It, it uh, you know, because I did big wheel stuff before this. You know, I rode those obnoxious mm-hmm. Christmas trees down the road, and <laughs> and uh, I loved it. You know, but then I fell out of love with the people around it. The reason why people were buying these, the reason why people took them to Sturgis, like. It was like nobody loved to actually ride them. It was just like they want to buy them and show them. Well, they were—they became, again, this is an outsider's view, more and more impractical mm-hmm. to to even ride. There was you couldn't even roll up the driveway. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it got complicated, you know, and and um, and I and I got into it very young. Like I was only twenty nine, which I I hope that's young to some. <laughs> um, and now that I'm thirty eight. You know, I I wanted to enjoy my youth on a motorcycle in a fun way and not completely go down this materialistic path with with motorcycles, which is definitely something that's in our industry. 
Um, and I sell a materialistic thing, a, a service, you know. Sure, sure. Um, but the as I was lost looking for something to uh, inspire me to fall in love with motorcycles again, um, seeing unknown uh, industry, seeing the the emergence of these like early 20 kids on these dinas just having fun and doing shit that I might have been a little too old to do, but I kind of wanted to be there just at least laugh at it. You no, know what I mean? I get it. I get it. And so now, you know, I found myself going backwards, going from, you know, building bikes or trying to build bikes that were 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars, which I never got that. But, you know, in my head I did. Um, and I wanted to just basically save some of my youth and enjoy this and and get out and, and find like minded people that also just wanted to ride bikes and make friends and party and drink and sure, sure. do all the hooligan shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, one, one, one a couple of points that you mentioned in there. Uh, one is you have a I, much like myself. I've got a little bit of a guilt of capitalism. It's already come up yeah. in our conversation a few times uh, of this this industry idea. Uh, and then I had another great point about the industry. Oh, it was a great point. It's going to come back to me. I can't. I can't uh, think. Uh, I can't hold two thoughts. What do you call that? Chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> oh, this is what it was. Okay, this is what it was. You, you're, you're talking about being, am I messing up the sounds? No, just, just come a little closer, though. Yeah. Good. I didn't want to move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's okay to be uh, inspired by the youth. So you, you also have a sense of, like, I can't, you were shocked that you were inspired by the youth. But I think that's what keeps us fresh. Yeah, exactly. Is to, is to you know, I, don't, my, I have a 17-year-old son, you know, and I can make fun of his fashions. Uh, but they're pretty inspiring in, in, the, uh, in the music. Um, that I try to listen to is I'm always the youngest or the oldest person at the show. Yeah. <laughs> but here's a but here's a new I'm going a little bit deeper here. Here's what I get what I love about the youth movements is there's a there's this term that I hear used around it's new language. Uh -huh. That the young people have a new language to describe things, a new perspective, a new way to describe things. Um, that that I really appreciate. It's constantly changing. That I'm not so conservative that I'm stuck in my ways. Mm -hmm. That flat track needs to be this or performance needs to be this. I love it when some kids that's roll up point. and like, holy shit, uh, that's pretty great. It looks kind of hokey to me. It's a little bit dissonant to my eyes and ears, but I like where this young well, person's going. For think about it like this, maybe sometimes it's hard for those those new language or these the youth to to find a way to palette their ideas into something that we can understand. Okay, now we're going real deep. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't <even> smoked weed. <laughs> now we're going real deep. I, I uh, you know, I, I I remember all the things of my youth and what what was important to me and the way I dressed and the way I felt like I had to be perceived. You know, as a kid and, and growing up, and then, you know, I was kind of like wanted to be that that trendy kid in in high school that had all the Jordans and and uh you know dressed with the tommy hill figure and sure, all the sure. materialistic shit and then i you know i didn't do the college thing i did the shop thing and so quickly it became the dickies and at the time it was adidas sure. you know just something was it your work, you was a working up. class yeah. look yeah and then that kind of became my culture my ideology who i was i was a working it says right there working class yeah yeah yeah. you know working that it was that I was not a college kid. I wasn't daddy's lawyer money, you know. Sure, was, sure. So I identified with that culture, and then so does motorcycles, and it all just kind of works. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm on number two, by the way. It's okay. No one's keeping score. <laughs> no one's keep, we'll just keep cracking, and we won't keep count. <laughs> but no, so like you know, with with uh, I was listening to the podcast. You got to forgive me because so much shit has happened between last week when I listened to it and now. So it's spotty in my head, but. You know, the Danger Dan podcast you did, but how'd you transition from pulling it from the car dirt track is what basically what I'm getting sure, at. Sure, sure. To into the motorcycles. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, Danger Dan's podcast. That was great. Uh, <laughs> so specifically, how like how do you organize an event? So here's here's a hallmark, or here's something. I I have to give a long answer to a to a broad question. Like We're on long form conversation. Buddy. Okay. Um, so maybe you're, maybe I mentioned this or not. I'm just going to repeat how I see my life um, falling together. I think I've always been good at organizing events. I need to organize something. 
Um, and I'm a teacher. Yeah. So it comes. I forgot that. That's right. You I, are a teacher. It comes kind of naturally to organize people. So I'm going a little bit deeper. And this, this statement seems seemingly disrespectful. But I've, I've become comfortable with using a group of humans as a, as a work of art. So watch me make this room of people laugh. Watch me make this room of people come together and finish a project. Watch me make this room of people um, start throwing beer cans or yeah. whatever. It is. I think I have. A, I think I've figured out the formulas, not to control people, but you, to you know how to tap into the mob mentality. To, well, okay, but in a positive, in a positive, <laughs> in a positive way. positive way. So I enjoy organizing things. So I do. I have. I have a, a resume that's building from beginning to book punk bands before the internet. Um, and you know, then getting confidence for the next step, next step, and next step. So in Dangerous po- Danger Dance podcast, that was the day after I had organized this giant bicycle race, mm-hmm. which um, gave me, I guess, the um, the credentials mm-hmm. to ask a bank for money to do uh, Flat Out Friday. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a, I guess, a generic history. But what I try to do is I believe that every event so that I'm discrediting myself in the motorcycle world because I think every event has nuances that need to be tapped into or that every that make of an event successful yeah there's check boxes I don't know what they are but I can feel them and taste them like I don't eat meat for example but I love to cook steak and and trying to describe to my yeah. kid my little kid I have a 12 year old that loves to cook too when a steak is done it, you you got to just you just feel it. Yeah. <laughs> and I love guessing and I love being wrong even like oh man. Personally I like it when it's burned but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> just the other day I was over Labor Day weekend I was like oh, I love to cook. Let me cook. Go ahead. Get step away from the grill. I'm going to cook these steaks. How do you like them? Medium rare or whatever. I totally fucked them up. I made them they were all totally overcooked. But my point is <laughs> uh, that 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 you know, unintangible I I'm, I'm I'm chasing I love to be at Flat Out Friday when I'm I'm chewing gum and I'm on the cusp of your your existence. It's it's, it's such a heavy weight financially, mm-hmm. spiritually, and to be making those decisions with headphones, and and um, and and keeping up this this energy. So on the at Flat Out Friday we have like we had a um, a guy in a rabbit suit playing drums. And I had him in a wagon, and I paid a crew to, to rock him around the arena. I want you to play in the men's bathroom. I want you to play next to the deep fryer. I want you to play in the hooligan hit pits where it's totally crowded. I want you to play in section 221 um, just to create dissonance. Because mm-hmm. that's, one, that's one thing um, when planning an event. I think people need dissonance. I think you need so What does dissonance mean? Like something raw. I'm going to use an example. There was this band one time, a punk rock band. Uh, they had a seven inch, and they put sandpaper on the edge of the of the record sleeve. So every time you pulled that record out, it got scratchier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's dissonance. <Okay. laughs> you play the record, it's got a little scratch. Like, so we could go to Cancun, you and I, and you know, we bring some girls. We go to Cancun and we do a bunch of weed and some cocaine, and um, and we get high at the, at the pool all day. It sounds like paradise. But shit, man, I forgot my wallet. And like we survived it and uh, we had the hitchhike and we met this family and they took us to their goat farm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so your trajectory is you think you want this, but holy shit, it was so much better because there was just a little dissonance, a little something that went wrong. A little bit of a fork in the road. And we, and we do it all the time. We do it, we do it instinctively all the time, humans. Hey, how was your Labor Day event? You know, I might ask the manager here. Well, it was good, but and there's always that, but we'll never get rid of that negative part of it. And do you, and, do you think that is because uh, we do so much planning and we put expectations at such a high level that even though it was an amazing event, that didn't meet the like expectations? Sometimes, sure, for sure. So let's get rid of those expectations. Now, of course, I have some expectations. I want a good attendance. Yeah. I want an interactive show. But let's just like add, like let's just throw this into the fire, and let's see what happens. Um, and I'm creating a little bit of a constant dissonance or chaos. Of course, it has to be safe. I don't want them to get hurt. Yeah. But I want, I want, I'm going to go in a little bit deeper. I, I wore this mask today on purpose to the Harley dealer because I know it's dissonant to the, like to the to the, like the, nobody's wearing one here. Yeah. To like the right wing people here, and I'm not. There's no disrespect. I'm not talking politics. Yeah. But I wear this mask to like. So that they, the first guy I saw, I could see in his eyes, 
like, what are you doing wearing a mask in here? Because yeah. this is like free country. Uh, and I've gotten my ass kicked plenty times, <laughs> just like Danger Dan was telling me he did too, by being a little bit of a smart ass and searching for this dissonance. So they answer your question now. How do you plan an event? Was that is that yeah. the question? How do you? Um, well, I, I I got into so I I quit stock car racing. Mm -hmm. Very ex extremely expensive. And when I go to a race. Do you like racing? You ever been to? I do. Yeah, is is yeah. dirt track racing, car racing, big in Texas? Dirt track and car racing is big, but is super trashy. <laughs> yeah, I love it yeah. though. I love it. So it's a, uh, and, and you know, I'm not trying to pass judgment, even though that completely was. Um, I just, it, it was never really a part of the circle that I grew up in. You know, like we did the drag racing growing up, but you know, like you said, drag racing is easy. You can throw anything on a, on a drag strip. You know what I mean? But going to a, a flat track or a dirt track or something like that, it's uh, it's kind of like you got to know somebody kind of almost. Well, well, I, I don't know. I think that you could say that maybe because you were from the drag strip. If I were to walk to a drag strip, um, you know, and you, you, you get that feeling that, oh, no one's talking to me. I don't know how to get involved. So, so because you were never an outsider, maybe. Well, because I never knew anybody in it either. So I never had a reason to go sure. try it. Sure. I was never influenced sure. to come. <laughs> but that that white trashiness, you will, that trashiness is is what I love about uh, stock car racing, um, and maybe that's a little bit deeper to who we who we are. Yeah. Maybe because um, I think I grew up middle class, maybe wanting to be working class. Does, does that make sense? I either grew up upper lower or lower middle. Okay, for well. sure it was on that line, but you know, I, I've. Um, wanted to go backwards my parents pushed us forward right they came from a working class and then they got good jobs and wanted to be you know with the nice house yeah push the prosperity in the uh, family and name. i wanted to go backwards and i wanted to be like my uncles and and be dirty live i forgot in, where we're going with live in that. vans <laughs> live in vans which yeah. is exactly it and, and to and to be yeah cause my family didn't like that but <laughs> In conclusion, uh, where, where, where was I talking about? about we were going to towards it? changing from stock car racing to... Uh, okay, so I got my son into uh, my first day of kindergarten. I bought him a, a motorcycle, 50. It was four-stroke 50s. And uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was so great to finally... You, you got kids? Yeah. I have an 18-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old boy. Sure, sure. And, you know, I tried to be a great dad. Like, we'll try karate and we'll mm -hmm. try... Uh, whatever hockey um bicycle riding and, and you know and you get a lukewarm response and but to see your kid flower yeah is the is the greatest thing the greatest yeah thing when ever. the when the the light bulb goes off in their head because yeah. they found something that was exciting yeah and and, and you make it I, I i've seen this too people make you know i love football i'm just making an example so my kid's gonna play football and love it and sometimes you see that kid doesn't really like football but mm -hmm. he does it I'm not in such denial, because I do have a 12-year-old that hates motorcycles. But uh, my point is, when I got him that, there was a special moment when I got him that motorcycle and he jumped on it and he wouldn't get off of it. Um, and so we, we tried motocross, and um, I found motocross to be a bit more like the stock car culture. It was just, it was really competitive. It wasn't a family atmosphere. <clears throat> and I started to kind of think why. And they have this like these giant campers, and, and they're they're so spread out. It's a massive event, and well, you, there's just no forced socialization. Think about like this, like like dirt bikes, and that became a big industry in the 2000s, big industry. And so when those things happen, when those kind of sports become big industry, the the upbringing becomes they go lower and lower in the age sure. to start to vet these kids to be able to compete at those levels sure it's like the tiger woods thing with him you know making the putts on letterman or whatever they're trying to get him there and build these mega stars and so what happens is like you're trying to take your kid to go learn how to ride a dirt bike and there's some four-year-old over there doing fucking you yeah, know yeah, triples yeah. and shit i know it you're you right know what i mean i remember one of my first races i remember i remember going to the race and seeing one of those elevator semis his name was like braxton williams like holy shit Bra there must be some pros here my son's on a 65, and I look over, and that's Braxton Williams. You know, he's like eight. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got this elevator uh, rig. Wow. But uh, my buddy Dave Kilkenny, who's we're still good friends, him and I have, like, survived this industry, I guess, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. We were friends back then. He's like, you got to try flat track racing. 
um, you could take the same bike, right? The same 50. Yeah. And uh, I, right when I pulled in, oh, Dave told us you were coming. Park over here. And, you know, this is how it works. You're going to have practice in heats and mains. And uh, it was so welcoming. You know, and my son got a trophy. And uh, and it wasn't like motocross where you, it's all day. It's 6 a.m. practice. Then your first heat's at 10. And then your second heat's at 4. Mm -hmm. um, it gets a little miserable. So we were flat track. It was under the lights. Saturday night, I could smell the burgers and the smoke. It was just, it was everything I loved about the stock car. Mm -hmm. And the little bit of trashy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, so just so real quick, so my son's getting older. Uh, we started to compete. <clears throat> and the problem with doing these like district races, so we do these races and you're competing for points. And uh, so we're going to races we don't even want to be at. Yeah. But we're going for the points. Um, we know it's going to rain, but we're going to drive to get the show up points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and so my son starts to get nervous. And um, in order to deal with that nerves, I was under the philosophy, I'm not going to fix his bike. He's on his own. I'm not changing his gears. If he wants to change his gears, he can change his own gears. I'm going to go flag turn one. Yeah. You know, and, um, and then I ended up starting to like helping with lineups. Yeah, number sixty-five, number twenty-two, and and then starting to develop systems from being a teacher <clears throat> and being clear. One great thing about being a teacher, one perspective, um, is that saying something isn't teaching someone something. So you might say to your kid, "I told you ten times to clean your room," but you really didn't teach him or teach them how to yeah how to get moving. So just because I'm saying number thirty-five, you're up next, and then thirty-five misses his race. A normal person would say, I called your name and you didn't listen. Yeah. So I created systems to 35 is, is here, or you know, he's on my lineup and I don't see him. It's my job to make him be here, mm -hmm. right? So I created systems of making sure nobody missed their races or to being really clear when I was a flagger. I would, I would end up flagging to just running a, a good, clean system. So I felt like I understood flat track. And then uh, I did with my, with Scott with and Warren. Scott been friends with Scott for a long time. They asked me to. Um, I went to Mama Tried. Actually, Scott and I were driving, and he told me about Mama Tried. I was like, "That is the dumbest thing. Motorcycle shows are so lame. <laughs> <laughs> we, a show that sounds so stupid. Why would you want to look at motorcycles?" You know what? Let me stop you right there because you you on Danger Dan's podcast you talked about how you didn't like doing shows with points, and you iterated a lot of different uh, reasons why. And that's the same, it's a lot to do with the same reason why I love shows to show bikes, but not shows to win trophies. Yeah, that's a whole nother culture. And I can imagine when you have a subjective winning of a show at the performance, yeah. how that's very political. It doesn't matter what kind of bike it is. Anytime you put trophies involved, it gets to the point where what it, what's amazing about if, if you go to a bike night, it's amazing to see other people's stuff. And if you're a real man, then you're, you appreciate when another dude puts his hard work and effort, For rides sure. it to there, and you're like, dude, that's fucking badass. You want to know that, hey, man, I appreciate the fact that you put in such a hard work and built such an amazing bike. Sure, sure. Right? And then take that idea and be like, you know, why did you, why did you bend the pipe this way? You know, yeah. why, I, I kind of see it. Why didn't you go this way? And then they would be like, oh, that's a great idea. And boom, you've created... You, you, you've created growth. You've, yeah. you've created the fact of, you know, obviously when more people talk, uh, ideas get expanded and, um, you know, cultures grow better sure. when people are talking. But what you do with a bike show and when there's big money involved and there's there's big bragging rights involved, it, time, it I think it breeds a very toxic culture, you know. For sure. And, that, and what happens with that is that nobody goes to these things and evolves. You go there – um, and and for sure, the way, when you said politics, what really what it is is, it's like lobbying for the most part. So it's like, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and pay. You know, when it was magazines, it used to be the curators of shows. You had to be the biggest advertiser to get all the love. If you were if you were one paying for a full page ad, you were getting your cover a year. Sure, you're probably going to win any shows or any any picks that they have at at shows and. And then also like just myself, like in a show, when I put my my art in a show, I become somebody that I don't like 
because I start it's like gambling to me and I don't gamble and for the same reason is because once I pay five dollars for that lottery ticket or in this day and age a hundred dollars for that raffle on the bike I automatically go to what am I going to do with these winnings that that confidence or arrogance that I have with like things and I haven't won it yet but I'm like man like it was it would be so cool to win and so like you start to build yourself on this on this high uh, where am I going to go? It's counting your chickens before they hatch, 100%. And then you don't, and then you're like... <sighs> sure, so you're saying that that's unhealthy, that's toxic for you personally. For me personally, but I see it in a lot of different people too as well. Because I want to contradict everything that we've just said, that um, could could that not breed the best of pushing the sport? So it's just a, a, yeah. a philosophical okay. question that, hey, if there's $1,000 on the line, it's going to push the creativity. That, that's a thesis that I just made up. Perfect, perfect deal because I completely agree with you. You know what I mean? So that you know what you said it best. You said earlier. You know what? I'm going to go to this. I'm going to take the things out of it that worked and were great. Um, and that's the same thing that I feel like when it comes to bike shows, we need to figure out how to do. How do we turn? How do we evolve this into something that does what you just said? It evolves the 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 scene, the the builders, and it incentivizes. But does it bring out all those negative characteristics that, that happen when, when you're, uh, when you're competing with somebody? Sure, sure. Well, I, I don't have an answer to that. Neither do but, I. But, uh, <laughs> but if you do, you know, email us or something. <laughs> but but I do think that to have the best success at like preserving a culture, um, that the, it has to be handled on the front end. It's too late on the back end. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's a thousand dollars to win this bike show. And then there's a winner, and everybody goes home, and everything is normal. But then I try to sell it as if it was something else. Yeah. I think we got to get everybody to believe, like, all right, here's a prestigious bike show. Um, I, I'm just making up rules, but it has different. It's. I told you about a new language, right? There's got to be a way to create a new language for creating bike shows to preserve that culture. So, so what I try to do, um, what I think have made my events successful. And why I also think I've lost people or people that don't like my bit yeah, because I'm not the old language. So my new language, here's the point of what I'm trying to say. When we, I have a writer's meeting, I'm trying to get everybody to appreciate the experience. It, I hate the text. If you've ever followed racers, I'm sure performance people do this too. You, you, know, you call your girlfriend. Yeah, show's over. How'd you do? Well, I got third. Kind of sucks. Well, that's cool. See you tomorrow. You missed that you were in an arena of ten thousand people screaming, <laughs> and all of the and all of the people you met and all of the the experience. Yeah, because yeah. you were just focused on winning, and winning, in I'm sure in performance is a lot of luck and it's a lot of yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I've I've dabbled in the concept of organizing as well, and we we host a camp out, which every fucking buddy does, right? But. Our camp out was in the Midwest, which we don't really have. What's the name of your camp out? It's the Fast Life camp out. Okay, okay. And we do it in a, a part of Oklahoma that you never, ever in your life have any reason to go to until we started doing this camp out, and there's all this gym of riding there. And um, what, what do you mean? So, 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 so now your your camp out has created a seed in that town. Yeah. Where the well, the seed in the in like a a section of Oklahoma that is really dead. But you're saying that because your event came there, you inspired people that are living there now. No, there's nobody there. <laughs> there's nobody there to inspire. They're in the they're in the hills. They, they, we don't want to see those people. But we what we what, what I've tried to do was I fell in love with the with the, the the traveling on a bike to a destination. You know, we all grew up in bikes, and uh, you know, the local thing becomes the bar hopping thing on bikes. Which uh, is a phase, in my opinion, that, that eventually, like, either A, you're going to get DWIs, or B, it's just not going to be entertaining anymore. It's not mm -hmm. going to fulfill that, that need or, or that feeling of riding. So, and also, like, I've, lo I've gained and lost friends over the time, not, not because of fucked up things, just of growing apart, right? And so, with me, when we started doing this camp out, it was um, about organizing, but it was about getting people in different parts of the country to organize their own trip. The camp out was just, I just made a destination, mm -hmm. but the trip is how you and your friends or you solo get this experience traveling to and from. Mm -hmm. So just like I was mentioning about the players, the humans or the art, 
you, your show, what you what you want to be known for, what your brand of your uh, camp out is, is that you curate the journey. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's, and then, and I'm just going. I don't know your event, but maybe that's fine. you curate the journey, and then that's that's what you share. Exactly. That you because everybody's on everybody's on some type of journey to that yes. destination, and at that destination, there's a campfire, lots of beer. We're trying to get more girls there, but right now it's a bunch of dudes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. But it, it's like a celebration to the uh, to the you know what you just did on a bike, and you you know a lot of people don't you know like when when the Midwest doesn't really have a whole lot going on uh, like what California has going on right with with the Born Freeze and all the events up and down the coast. So it, it sometimes it feels like a lot of this area just gets completely forgotten in the motorcycle industry and so yeah i could have made the camp out in on the other side of the rockies and probably get 10 times as many people because it's convenient to the sure. biggest part of uh the motorcycle culture but you know i like to uh, i guess i'm playing to the to the little guys that are out here on the rest of the country sure. that are very important to the progression of motorcycles in in the industry and the, and the culture sure and i'm guessing you have good friends I've made some of the best friends. I'm actually, you know, I've personally made some of the best friends that I have currently in my life at those campouts. Mm-hmm. And they're not from my town. And literally after I leave Milwaukee on Wednesday, I'm going across, the, I'm taking the the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Michigan? <laughs> to Michigan to go hang out and finally see one of my great friends, Neck of the Woods. Sure. You know? So so when you when you started your first camp out how how did you get the word out how did you get any why did why did anybody want to come ah man i old-fashioned marketing man like uh fortunately you know not that my social media is huge compared to a lot of different things in the world but you know it's big enough to reach a few people that dig the kind of shit we're into and i just use that and that's the only like i say my camp out it's me and my friends that, that we put this on i just used my business name as the name to kind of be sure. the the to give it some legitimacy the legitimacy so that people are like oh we're going to the fast life if i would have called it the uh the, the bunch of nerds camp out like <laughs> it wouldn't it, you know maybe it would work now but then it would they wouldn't have gotten across how, how many years you've been doing this uh next year this was our third one it'll be our fourth next okay, year okay and 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 what i was saying just like with racing um when I go to a race and the last guy passes for the start, just as he's going, I'm, I'm clapping because I appreciate how much effort they put in to make that race car get there. Mm-hmm. Particularly if you were saying that you were poor or trash, that people like mortgage their house to like pay for a, a four cylinder race car. Yeah. The, you know, the Honda, the Honda Civics, the lowest level of racing. Uh, but my point is, when you go to an event like this, it's just the infrastructure yeah. that it takes. Like, man, why aren't you having fun? Um, because the porta potties overflowed, or the cops came and told us to turn the music down, or uh, just the, that infrastructure that it takes to, to do an event is not appreciated by by everybody. True, but I'm telling you, I appreciate it, and I would like to go to your camp out. When is it? Uh, it'll be. It's usually in April, beginning of May. We try to catch it so that all the people up here are catching it right at the first time it gets dry on the ground, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. That way, people can uh, make it, and it's not too hot because it gets hot down there. And then also we don't want to infringe on uh, your Born Freeze and your uh, Laconias and all these other big massive sure. events that people probably want to go to. Like I want this to be like the you leave Thursday, you get there Friday, you leave Sunday morning, and you either book at home or you, you're home Monday. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. fortunately that's what it's like being in the middle of the country is you pretty much two days of hard riding from the every corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. But you know, like with your show or, or with the uh, with the event, man. Like, um, I I can appreciate how much and how hard it is to deal with more or less the stars of the event, which is going to be all your racers, and how you keep it also entertaining for all the spectators. And so your your drum thing was kind of like, oh, that's <laughs> that's annoyingly creative. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, I, I it's my idea to have to create. Like dissonance right away. So I've always had a punk band in the lobby. Mm-hmm. I, I, again, I, I I try to not have a. I'm not demeaning any human, but I have a bad taste in my mouth of the Midwest Harley culture. It, it, it's 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 very conservative, and I want yeah. I want it. So I want to have a punk band. So right away when you get there and you think you're just going to come to my show, 
you have to be a, a participant, like, mm -hmm. right? We're coming at you. And it's, it's, it's partially for thinning, but partially I think you get a real authentic event when it's, when it's not, you know, when I go to a Bucks game or a basketball game, I sit down in my seat and I watch a game and it's, it just doesn't really strike me. I want to mm -hmm. punch you in the face, I, you know, like to get an experience. I, I, I remember I told my dad I wanted to make a T-shirt launcher. My dad made these air compressor T-shirt launchers. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I wanted to knock beers out of people's hands. <laughs> I wanted, you, know, you just want to piss off people. <laughs> yeah. But it's easy to piss people off. It's like when you're in a punk band, it's easy to play loud. You, I want to take the air out of the room. I want to capture people. I want to change their trajectory. That's a, that's a word that I've used a lot during the writers' meeting. You think you've got all, life all figured out? And when I'm living my life and I, I admire people, like, man, that guy's got it all figured out. He's got his Packers shirt on. He's pumping gas. He listens to Metallica. His life is just all figured out. I'm spinning. I'm spinning in a toilet. I can't figure anything out. And, uh, <laughs> and how could you know anything, particularly in this day and age? How can exactly. you have anything figured out? It's, so, it's, it's changing every four hours. Exactly. <laughs> so my point is that's the philosophy of, guess, the art that I'm trying to create. It's got to be... Dissonant. And, and I'm not, of course, I want fans to come or people to come. I need them to sell tickets. Um, but that's my brand is to make it uh, wild. But you mentioned, um, like, how do you keep riders or racers? I, again, I start the riders meeting by focusing on the experience, not the winning. And you are not unique in this. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I mean, of course, I respect the riders and I'm learning to try to appreciate them more. Mm hmm. I'm trying to give them more money, um, give them some stuff back. Um, but I, I, people complain to me and they're with, through their subjective complaints. Like, hey, then you got to see the whole, the whole thing here, man. We had to run a four lap main because we were running out of time on television. I know that sucks, but we got it on television. Mm -hmm. For example, that's like one of a compromise. So on a dance podcast, you guys talked about uh, my buddy Carlos. Yeah, and Carlos is a really good friend of mine in Texas, and uh, Dan described him very well. I don't know if you finally figured out who he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, you know, he's he's an awesome dude. Yeah. Well, he. I remember he, because <laughs> he, he. No disrespect. He just like this happens in racing. This is what makes it so exciting. Yeah. He he shouldn't have made it. I mean, he was. Yeah. He just he was he was just he there just no one could get around him. Yeah. He had the lead and he wasn't going to give it up. He was just pull putting. Uh, but that's what's fantastic about the sport. But yeah, that, I mean that's that's kind of the thing. So like, uh, if it what you know that's a good analogy you say like with the Bucks game like it, you you go and they do their thing and like that's all they give you and that's all you should have to pay for. But you know is it what if I was going to put myself in your shoes I would probably want people to come here and be exposed to new things, maybe inspire them to go back and maybe want to do it if they just bought a ticket to come watch make the event so fun that you want to actually be a part of it. Sure, sure. Well, if so flat out Friday, the secret is it's mostly beginner classes, mm -hmm. uh, women's class, uh, the kids class, the hooligan. I got it. I have a JV hooligan or a beginner hooligan and then an expert hooligan. Mm -hmm. um, the mad dog class. There's always heavy, it's heavy beginner. And, and the greatest success is the hooligan riders that I meet or the racers that I meet that say I was I saw you in Cleveland and I've been doing this ever since mm -hmm. you know you inspired me in Cleveland so that is that's not a secret that's really what I'm trying to do is that this is attainable and and if, when you come to my event I used to post humbling flyers so this is another little secret ingredient <laughs> I'd post slogans around the pits uh, like your shit stinks uh, so like the opposite of like the workroom motivation posters. Sure, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, give a fuck about someone besides yourself. That's I'll post that around. Um, we're just getting rid of that rock star mentality. When when I first did my event, I remember pros were asking me to pay them to show up. Mm -hmm. And in that old language, I'd say, "Hey, Jared Meese is coming. Come to my race." That's how the language yeah. is for flat track. Um, and, it, and so one time, and I told we I have a, I do not pay riders to come. So I made that a rule, by the way. It's like the last second last rule. Yeah. I'm not paying you to come. And this is why I made that rule is Jared Meese, who is the number one rider. I don't know if you, if you know who Jared Meese is. Okay, well, Jared Meese is the number one rider in flat track. He's, he, he's, he ta he's taken the sport where he's a wrestler by trade, a mm -hmm. college wrestler or high school wrestler. And he's got, he's fit. He, he eats well. He works out. 
he's not the old school cigarette smoking beer drinking racer. He's mm-hmm. and he's gotten some pretty pretty major sponsors. Anyway, Jared Meese is the face of the clean racer. He came to my event once. He won. Great. He said he was coming again. I put him I put him on the advertising. Hey, Jared Meese is coming. Um, and he didn't show up. He didn't he didn't come. And no one said anything. And that's when I realized I don't need to pay anybody. Yeah. To show up money. Like not not one person to this day said, Hey, I bought a ticket and Jared Meese didn't show up. Um so my point is that it, it humility is is the backbone of everything that I'm doing. Uh, and one more thing, I got in an argument with someone from California. Um, hey, that's bullshit that you have no big names in the X Games. Someone's going to win that's no one's heard of. And exactly, that's exactly the point. Mm-hmm. Someone's going to win the X Games that you've never heard of. So that I, I can do this. You're watching in Boise, Idaho, or wherever people are watching this. I can do that. This guy's a nobody. This guy's like me. Mm-hmm. That's actually, you know, um, I mean, in the motorcycle world, I mean, we all kind of start as nobodies. And, you know, that's what I was saying about, like, the opportunity to or just showing a light on this part of the country that doesn't really get the opportunities that kind of flow like like wine in California. You know what I mean? You know, so it's like um, same thing, like, uh, you know, the the people that have come to the camp are camp out and have made a name for themselves now, um, which, you know, not because I shed light on them, but just because I gave them an opportunity to do something more, or, or I gave them a reason to mm-hmm. come somewhere and do something more. I've seen people's popularity grow, and then what they do with that popularity is completely up to them if they turn it into a business or they turn it into uh, just anything, mm-hmm. you know? But to me, it's it's what's cool is like now the, the the celebrities of the events are just the the dudes that you can be. Sure, exactly. All you gotta do is be a fucking badass rider. Not even a badass rider. You just gotta do shit. Like, ride through rain, ride through a snowstorm to get here. Sure. You and, know? And, well, you, it doesn't help if you can if you can document it with good photos and, yeah, exactly. you're, and you're good looking yourself. I mean, yeah, none of us are good looking at the <laughs> camp out. Like, there's and that, not hot dudes there, that's for sure. And that helps out a little bit. But I, I also wanna, you just, I wanna focus a little bit on California because it's a theme that's come up with both of, with, with both of our stories. I, I don't want to diminish anybody that's worked, sure, that's no. worked hard in California. N- unknown Industries or, or, or Rusty Butcher, mm-hmm. uh, which these guys are names in the hooligan world, and I'm sure you have thousands in the performance world. Mm-hmm. These guys worked hard. So yeah, exactly. just, just being from California isn't... It's not a golden ticket. It's, yeah. it's not a golden ticket. These guys bust ass. and I, Because I've been... One of the things I'm trying to do is... I. It, Wisconsin, I think by far, pound for pound, is the best flat track riders in the country. That's a bold mm-hmm. statement. And then we have these California riders that would come to our event, and right away, there's got to be a division. Well, pff, right, both of them, both both camps got their arms crossed. Yeah. And uh, and I was, and I felt a little bit sorry for the California guys, because the the Wisconsin guys were mad. They had a vendetta against them because they had all this popularity. Harley brought paid for them to come to Milwaukee. And they weren't particularly very good riders, and I was defending them like, "Hey, they work fucking hard for where they are, and, yeah. and let them alone. This is not easy for anybody." And then, and I think some friendships have developed, by the way, because of that. But one more thing, I want to also I also want to criticize California, and and the Born Free show is beautiful. It's, yeah. it's 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 almost religious. It is the whole the background, the people, the culture. It's it's nirvana. It's a perfectly curated. Just everything about the culture in your face. The music, the skateboards, yes. the bikes, both from the performance bikes like we ride to the choppers and the builders and the, the lifestyle brands associated. It is, yes. it is 100%. Um, but I didn't feel a connection with the humans that were there. Like, well, it was just Californians, <laughs> but, but, but okay, right? That's just it. That's just because they're yeah. from California. That that's that's the only my only criticism is there's a disconnect of, of empathy. Well, that's what you know. We used to have a giddy up in in Texas, and giddy up was my first like show that I went to that was like of that vintage chopper uh, culture, right? And I fell in love with it. I fell in love with how intimate it was, to where all the vendors there were like partying out in front which they do in california sure, too, sure. At, at born free i fell in love with the fact that like after the show one mile away there's a campground that everybody at this show every vendor everybody here is over there partying 
having a good time, going to campsite to campsite, drinking beers. Mm-hmm. And it felt like I just I fucking fell in love with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I have a camp out today was because of that experience. And the first time I went to Born Free, I fell in love with the show, but it lacked the the connection to all the people there afterwards like we had a giddy up in the uh, campground and things like that and and it's not a criticism criticism of born free born free should continue to do what it does and i love it i'm a huge fan and i'm going to go whenever i can and buy all the shirts (laughs) and i love it and it still is in my small world of what i do they are the cream of the crop yeah and when all the respect goes to them i just want to focus on a little different area which is the camaraderie Mm -hmm. of things and and i so i i am not part of the mama tried show they brought me into the family um, and so I don't speak for them, but I, I, I eat and breathe their philosophy. Um, and their philosophy of creating their show was to bring, um, you know, drag bikes and flat track bikes and chopper people all together in the same room mm-hmm. so that they would be inspired by each other's stuff. And even that was tough. Even that, you got a drag bike, like, you know, scoffing at the performance guy who's scoffing at the vintage chopper guy. Um, they don't say it, and they act like they're all friends. But that, that, cult, that culture took... Uh, some cur- curating, yeah. You know, you, got, you have to, you got to, you got to bring them together. Do you know who Ethan White is by chance? No, I don't. Ethan White is a hooligan rider, good-looking guy. He does, he does all the ads now for uh, TC Brothers. Mm-hmm. He's got a supermodel girlfriend. Guy's living a perfect life, and I always give him shit. <laughs> My point is, we had a deep philosophy in Sturgis, and he, and I, this, this is his phrase. And I was like, you know, what, what makes a good party? What makes a good event? You know, I have my ideas, but Ethan, what about you? And he said, getting everyone on the same frequency. Mm. So that's, that's, you know, if you really boil down the success of an event, I think that's what it really is. Because I'm almost done. I'm, I'm focusing on this one point that you said. Mm-hmm. What made a good event is going from campsite to campsite, having a beer, having a beer, having a beer. Um, I'm conscious maybe from being a teacher that, hey, I noticed that those vendors over there are not hanging out. They're not, for whatever reason, let's work them into the fold. Let's actively get them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap go on top of your, for that. so that's how we, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, that's how we curated the camp out that we host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is we force, or is forcing as much as we can, everybody to camp together. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we, instead of having multiple fires and multiple circles around a fire, we have one big fire. That's right. So that it helps the people that may not have the personality skills to go and walk into a group Mm -hmm. and strike up a conversation. All they simply have to do is sit by the fire and then they'll get roped up into some Mm -hmm, kind of conversation one way or another. I think it's a brilliant idea that, you know, I, I don't believe in rules many rules but there's few rules and the few rules are one campfire i think it's a great idea because that's what that's what i was saying earlier about the motocross the guys are all in their own camps flat track i got them cheek to jowl mm-hmm. you, you have to you can't dehumanize anybody because they're right there yeah because you're going to say in your you know if it's you and two dudes and you don't really know people and you're not really like the most outgoing kind of people sure. you're going to find a little area over there that way you have your privacy and you know, I, I respect that, but I really, you know, I would see the campfires going on somewhere. It's like, hey, man, we got a big one over here, man. Mm-hmm. You grow all this way, man. Come be somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're killing it. You're very articulate about this, and I, I'm a better person after listening to you. Oh, man. <laughs> I need to listen to myself sometimes, then, if you're going to tell me that. But, no, that's that's kind of the thing, and that's why, like, I was very uh, interested in, in, like, your talks with Dan about, like, your curation of events and shows and things like that. Because realistically, it does, you know, the, the what I get out of it, if, if you will, and I don't, I don't make any money on our camp out. I, I, you know, and I know that you have to do it because there's a lot of loaned money. There's a lot of things that go on with sure, the flat sure. Friday to make it work. But, you know, I don't want it to be a business. I want it to be something that I don't feel like I have to work at. Sure. You know, um, but as I've also become more known in it, it kind of gets weird sometimes Mm -hmm, mm because some dudes are from areas and they don't see a lot of people and they think i'm famous and i'm not (laughs) you know what i mean so they'll just like kind of nerd out in a weird way and i'm just like man i'm just i'm like you dude that's all i am sure and and i i've just been i've just gotten comfortable making money um doing what i'm doing and by the way i'm only comfortable making money in the long run because i just lost a ton of money so so now the fact that i need to make money um like my partners were just, I was just texting. I used to always be the one, stuff should be free. 
you know, <laughs> it should be cheaper. Okay. Of let's overpay people, let's overpay our artists, and let's be a good person. Now it, I'm much more cutthroat. The, my partners call me Capitalist Jeremy. Like I really like this new Capitalist Jeremy that's developing. I have a better sense of the money, the loss, the loss and gain. And through it all, through your camp out, you know, maybe you maybe you get a sponsor, maybe Pepsi sponsors you and gives you ten grand or something to hang up their flyers. But that's gonna make up for the next two years when it rains and uh, you know, you had to hire a, a bobcat to come scoop out some landslide or something. I mean, you know, you yeah. because of the 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 time invested and also, you know, the, I have two sons and a wife. Yeah. And I'm a zombie of a human when I'm on the phone constantly and that should equate to some so you know on that like we uh we've been thinking about hosting some kind of show in texas because with there's so much crazy shit going on that we haven't you know this year for sure but just in general like shows have kind of fallen apart in texas and not that our scene isn't strong um but you know to your point of like having to make money i completely support that because i know me personally if the magazine companies 10 years ago would have came out and said hey guys here's the deal if you guys start don't start getting subscriptions we're not going to be here and if i would have heard something like that i probably would have been like you know what you're right let me go ahead and get subscriptions instead of just picking and choosing the ones at the uh, sure, at sure. the barnes and nobles that i liked because it, it's kind of weird when you get used to something that's always been there and then you you know for lack of a better term maybe it's free like podcast or uh, you know, getting into certain shows. And so you don't go to the ones that cost money, but the sure. ones that cost money are the ones that it costs money to do. Sure. And if they're all gone, then what do you have to do now? You know? No, I get it. I get it. And and renting, I, I know that because you do have to pay to go to Mama Tried, for example, which may, is, well, you got to pay to go to most shows. Maybe Fuel Cleveland, that's a great show that's free. Yeah. But we rent, a, a, it's hard to find the idea of like let's just do it at this warehouse even the one show um is done with that yeah um because you can't you can't hide it from the city yeah bars and restaurants have a lobby they don't like it when people are selling 100 grand worth of beer out of a warehouse right they call the licensing so we have to go through a licensed place which is not free the pfizer form which were the bucks play that's um a, a fortune literally a fortune to rent Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that I'm on the hook for. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope I can come out of this. Um, yeah, well, you, you, you've you've summed it up nice. Uh, I, I appreciate your uh, your talking. I'm not concluding. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just realizing that th like, this is a humbling thing. I used to think I was just this talk of organizing events that were friendly, that were all inclusive were unique and they're not unique mm -hmm. you're doing your very similar philosophy to organizing a quality event well it, it's about investing in in your community right well th that's a word you keep using and I, I can't i'm shocked to hear you using that word mm -hmm. and you believe it when you say it yeah and so like the guy that the adam sandoval is the guy that owns the campground he's a biker the campground is curated for bikers another word we keep using um it's set up for bikers and he's welcoming of bikers. So it's not like a campground where there's also RVs. They are there, but their comfort and their, uh, you know, how they feel, they sure. know they're coming to a biker campground. There's going to be loud stuff. No one's going to sleep till the sun comes up. So don't even waste your time complaining about it when you decided to come bring, you know, little Timmy and Molly out here for a, a canoe trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, that's why we, we deal with it. And that's why we're not also going to a campground with all these families sure. and, 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 and imposing our will on them. So, sure, sure. But, oh, oh, what, what makes a successful event for you? Is, I mean, I, I guess that's – you're too smart to answer that question. <laughs> but how many people would you expect to be – So that's the thing. So – the the people thing originally when I the first one we did it's like anything you host a party just your birthday party and you know it's weird to host your own birthday party but just say you're hosting your own birthday mm -hmm. party and you tell everybody seven o'clock well seven fifteen when there's like no one there yet yeah 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 you're just like man they, it, it's a it's a it's a crappy feeling kind of yeah. oh I know it and then when the first person gets there you're like cool and then if you start talking to them you don't even realize the other fifty people that show yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah. right. You're like, oh, shit. 
dude. And it's like those that that anxiety you had at the beginning is completely gone. Yeah. And it's like fuck yeah, now it's a party. And then you know me, I, my fault is I don't want that party to end, so I'll get super shit faced and make a fool of myself. <laughs> but with the camp out, because I have that luxury that I'm not trying to make money on it, I'm just trying for the campground. It's not costing me money to put on. And the only thing that I'm putting into it effort-wise is exactly what I'm doing now. Sure. I talk about it or I post it on it on Graham. Um, but you could still get 100 people? Uh, so, yeah, the first year we only had 50. Mm-hmm. But some of the rock stars, if you will, were in that 50. Mm-hmm. And now they're known. And now they've gone back to their little parts of the country and built kind of a – I don't want to say cult following, but they have became kind of ambassadors of their area mm-hmm. and got more people like-minded. And then the next year they brought more people. Sure, sure. And then the ne- and so last year – or this year, COVID, uh, April 26, I believe, mm-hmm. a month – after just about every place got shut down, we were scared to put it on. Mm-hmm. We were scared to advertise it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were scared not to do it, right? So I said, you know what? We're just going to do it. And if we all die, we all die. Sure. And we had over 200-something people show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went from like 70 people to 200-something sure. people. I'm thinking that maybe in this in the COVID, for some of like that, helped you, right? Yeah, for sure. It, it's a relatively safe event, camping, yeah. right? And then there's nothing else going on. So I think it certainly helps you. Uh, so, uh, you you mentioned that the who who you said who the rock stars yeah give me the name would I who would I know who are the rock stars? I don't know if you know them because it's only the, it's only kind of in our but tell, circle but, well, but tell me the name so I can follow him I can find him uh, Steve Chamberlain is probably he's out of Michigan over here he's okay. a he's a good friend so of you're mine going to see yeah and yeah. Uh, he's just he's just a He's just a badass biker. He made him a ro- he, he's a rock star because like his not his, because of me but because his Instagram blew up or no no he's he, I think he's a, his Instagram is relatively you know five thousand people it's not huge compared to some people but what I've seen him do how he went back to his town inspired people to do what he's doing to me that's a rock star okay so he 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 became you in Michigan if you will. Like he, yeah, possibly. He yeah. planted that flag in Michigan. He's got like thirty dudes, and he's got a crew. Yeah, he's kind of. And he's also, you know, like I said, he's just a hard. He's a rider. He he gets out, you know, and he he pushes through those storms and 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 things. And he he he's he's a man of his word. He shows up. He mm-hmm. does shit. He's badass. And um, I didn't I didn't make that dude. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he made it. He was who he was. He just like. Did some badass shit by right. He was the only dude that rode that far, and he he was just a he came there and partied hard with us, and uh, you know, and then to me that that made us love him and do nothing but talk about him. And when you talk, if, so, if everybody said my name every day, I'd get famous for who knows why. Sure, sure, right. But my name keeps getting talked about, so it's like I guess he's something. You know how that kind of shit works sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like if I can get a dollar from everybody, I could be rich. <laughs> if I can get my name said by everybody in America, I'd be the most famous guy in America. You well, know? you mentioned about, like, you know, cashing in or getting the money back. I do want to say that the foundation of everything that I do, when I'm dead, really the only thing that amounts to a hill of beans is respect at the end of the, yeah. at the, end of the day. I know that that sounds... Like maybe juice. leaving a legacy, basically. Sure. This I want. This this would be me. This is how I know I'm going to make it. I'm 75, and I can still go to my corner bar, and someone gives me their seat. I mean, you know what I mean? That yeah. to me, respect is yeah. is is everything. It means so much more than a pile of money. If I have to be an asshole to get it. Well, if you're in the motorcycle scene, then uh, you pretty much uh, have to do away with the thought of ever being rich. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because it's probably. I mean, you might make. You'll be happy. You'll be okay. But you know. I, I always tell people right now, I was like, I feel so successful. And I don't own a house. You know, I got a cash car. Sure. I have a really badass motorcycle. Um, but, I'm, you know, I just got so much to live for, basically. Well, you know, not just my kids and wife, but just the friends everywhere and all the shit in, in the country. And, and feeling empowered to want to try to push uh, our bike scene, whether mm-hmm. it's the shows or whether it's the riding or – what the fuck ever it is, you know what I mean? So I don't know. That's just me. I no, get all emotional. With it's it. not just you. It's it's. It, I'm getting more beer because I'm on. I'm, <laughs> I'm listening though. Keep talking. It, it, it's it's not. Yeah, you're not being cheesy. I can I can feel your sincerity. Yeah. When I was younger, I was I really believed in the punk rock flag. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Inspired about traveling around the country and meeting all the people, and I really believed in punk rock. 
and I, but I guess, I guess, I believe we we believe in humans. Yeah, we believe there's still a good there's still good people out there, even in these crazy times. Well, I think in these crazy times, we just figured out which ones are good people, and and or not that they're. There's a lot of good people, but there's a lot of uh, misguided people. Sure, you know? sure, but there are. Uh, I will say this. Regardless of your political spectrum, there are and there are good people. Overwhelmingly, people are yeah. good. That's that's been my experience. Overwhelmingly, I, I I've only met a few people that I would consider to be scum, but that I would dehumanize. I mean, I'm yeah. talking single digit numbers. I I have a degree in behavior management. My point is, I, I teach bad kids. Yeah, I remember that. And it was point, one yeah. or two kids in my lifetime that were like, "Man, this guy's an asshole." My point is, other than that, <laughs> I really sincerely care deeply about um, all of the students I've ever taught and I care very deeply about humans for the most part um, once I've had them in a one-on-one -on -one setting mm -hmm. all right <laughs> it's this deep no, I appreciate yeah. this deepness no it's fun man and, and, challenging and this is what I would like this is what I would think if your listeners are listening to this God, this is boring. I want you guys. Why don't you guys talk about those new, uh, the new and fuel injection system? Yeah, uh, I'm kind of bored talking about that. I've been talking about it all fucking day. But um, what I think this is, this would be rich. This is. Oh, I know what these guys are talking about now. Next time when they when they go to your show, you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. I feel like such an asshole, and I complain to them that my campsite was muddy, because <laughs> I didn't know there was a deeper philosophy here that this guy puts into it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird because, like, out of all of it, I think that. Most people that curate events in general, you know, like even maybe I haven't talked to the guys from Born Free, um, but just imagining, you know, where something like that starts and it kind of blossoms. But it all usually starts from a good place. Like, man, sure. I want to just hang out with, with the homies sure. and do cool shit. And then it's like, oh, man, this is growing or this could be something else. And the capitalism kind of does come along, but um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I would rather see people in the motorcycle industry make that money instead of like if Pepsi decided to put on a motorcycle event right. and then we paid Pepsi who has no stake in the game. Sure. You know, but they just had the money to fund fund it or whatever. Right. You know. And and I, again, I, 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 what's the guy's name from Born Free? I can't believe I remember his name. Grant and something else. Yeah. I, I saw one of them. We, we did a race out there and I was, he was good looking. And he was totally cool and nice to everybody. Yeah. I'm such a dick on race day. And I remember complimenting, like, man, you've got this under control. And he's like, no, I don't, man. I'm slipping. I was like, no, you look great. He's well rested. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> snapping on people. Yeah. I know what you mean, man. It, it, there's definitely that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you're trying to get this event together, like, what, like, how do you just, I mean, what's a successful event to you? Yeah, good question. Good question. Well, uh, you know, with thinking about it, again, administratively or politically, there has to be benchmarks that need to be made when you rent an arena. Yeah. So just real quick, um, if you want to rent an arena, this is what makes my event different. Mm -hmm. It's not a race at a race track. It's not at a club track. It's not at a, I didn't rent a state fair. I rented an arena, a basketball arena. Um, and what's the, you know, it's not like renting Chuck E. Cheese. How much does your room cost? Oh, it's 150 Great. Book me on Wednesday. They want to sit down with you and they want to, they do all their research. They want to extract as much money out of you as possible. So they don't look at how much is rent going to cost. They look at how much should tickets be and how much beer sales are going to, are going to go. So I got to start right there. What's a successful event? We do, we do need to hit numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when you make all of these promises, you got to hit these numbers. And we got to hit these beer numbers because <laughs> yeah um our beer we sell a lot of beer that's what gets us into arenas um bikers drink man when you call when i call someone and wherever i don't know boise idaho and they're not interested nah we don't you know we might damage the floor we don't have an exhaust system we'll call the last arena and ask them about our beer sales you know and they'll call back okay well we we want to talk yeah so you we have to hit these certain marks um in a successful event, first off, I feel like I have to work for it. I feel like I have to stay up for a week, still teach, you know, the day before, <laughs> absolutely run myself into the ground ragged with problems and and, and overcome them. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way that that beer tastes extra good. Yeah. Is at, at the end is like, holy fucking shit. My crew and I are all red eyed <laughs> and crying with fucking emotion. Uh, that's got to be there. 
Um, but also there's got to just be magic. There has to be something magic. It just, I just can't be pedestrian. Oh, number seven, one. Oh, number nine, one. Number 22, one. It's got to be, holy fucking shit, I can't believe that that happened. Yeah. That this, that this mystical, magical thing that happened that we could, didn't plan for. Yeah. A save. Um, you know, someone fell and then someone almost high-sided but saved it. Like, holy shit, there's got to be these hallmark moments. And and I, I run my event. If you've ever been to a flat track race, you ever been to a flat track race? Not yet. I was, uh, I was telling uh, Tommy earlier that me and my boys were going to rent a – because you were in Dallas, right? And then Mama tried, and your event is same time, right? Yeah, we're at the same weekend. Yeah, so the deal was we were going to come up this year, but then I guess it got moved from normally being in like yep. the February to March. Yeah. And then for me, at least, you know, sometimes every year I plan to go to Daytona. I never go, but yep. I plan to. So it was like, oh, fuck, it's right there at Daytona. I don't know if I can swing it. So we were going to rent a big-ass church van type thing, and all of us come up here and just – we think that we're some of the hardest drinkers in the country, and we want okay. to come put it. We Bold want, statement. We do. We just <laughs> we're gonna, want to I'm come. put that to the test. That's what we want to come up for. It's kind of like the Green Street hooligans of the, the soccer world in yeah, Manchester yeah, 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 and things yeah. like that, just going out and we can out drink and party all, you know what I mean, which we probably can't, but, you know, it it's enough to get us going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you're, putting, you're, putting, you're putting your hat in the ring. Exactly. Exactly. Like, <laughs> You got to have the confidence to get in the ring, and then you'll find out what you're really working with. Maybe you're, maybe you're a superstar. Maybe, maybe you need to work on it. You know. So, yeah, yeah. But no, I've, I, we wanted to. I do know about it though. I do know the uh, from. Well, not not my race. Have you ever been to any flat track race? Yes, they did one at a Harley dealership, but it was a it was a dirt race though. Um, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, okay, I, okay. I, I, well, traditionally, if you were to go to a race, it's it's it's. A race, then there's a water truck. A race, then there's an accident. Yeah. And there's just no sense of urgency. Um, I want a three-hour show of, 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 I want you to, when we plan the schedule, we plan the minute by minute with television, you know, because we got to yeah. put it on the internet. I want it to be like, oh, I got to go to the, I got to get a beer. Wait, what the, what, what's it, what? Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, this is happening? And then it ends, oh, I'm going to go get a beer. Wait, what? Um, action packed, action packed the entire, the entire time. But I want to contradict that. You ever see the Nitro Circus show, though? For yeah. example, I thought it was too much. My, my retinas, my ears, my eyes—I was burned out. It was so action packed. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was. I was getting yelled at the whole time with, with the excited announcer, and the music was loud. Um, so there is a cadence. There, I tell people this all the time. I, like my son, when I tell him how to cook my students when you show them how to do things you, you have to make love to it you yeah. know <laughs> you ever get your car stuck in the snow you just can't floor the yeah, yeah. you just can't floor it <laughs> ram it in there you have to make love to the to the car and rock it and you got to make love when you're curating a show when you make a good wine or a good spaghetti dinner <laughs> do you taste the love yeah exactly <laughs> uh but so i don't know if i don't know if i answered your question about how do you what makes the successful, makes successful show? Successful, yeah. I guess is if something special has got to happen and people have got to like it. And it, I also, I mean, I have a terribly low self-esteem. I'm, I'm going to guess you and I are similar this way. We've been, we've been similar in almost everything all along. But when the, when your camp out's over, and this is what I would do if I was running your camp out, it's over. Everybody left. Everybody had a great fucking time. But I'm like, man, I can't believe you ran out of ice. And, you know. And then, See, that's why you know by not having a financial investment into it. I always tell people like this. I'm having a camp out. I want you to come. If you don't, I don't give a fuck because I'm drinking with my friends. I know sure. my friends are going to be there. But if you want to come out here and enjoy this and make, then come. Sure. If not, if there's 20 of us there, we're going to have a good time. If there's 200 of us, we're going to have a good time. And, and I try to keep that in mind. That way I don't – I keep my expectations manageable. You know what I mean? If there's a 2,000 people there – Maybe then we can start talking about maybe some, making some money off this thing. But for the time being, it's not really about that. It's just about uh, inspiring people to do this shit and then seeing when they take that away, what happens? What do they do sure. to their towns when they come back? Do they go back inspired to, you know, and they have. Like Steve has a camp out mm -hmm. up here in uh, Interlochen, Michigan, or Interlochen, however you say that. And it's turned into a big event. 
he's on year number two this year. And I think it's badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's to me, it's just a, you know, um, it, it's just about like, uh, you know, I, I literally really do believe in like trying to leave this industry better than I found it. Well, I, this, I, this scene. I if appreciate you will. your your humility and your uh, the way you describe that. I, I do have that that I'm going to call that arrogance a little bit. Mm-hmm. Meaning, I'm going to do this event, and if you want to come, then come, and if not, then don't come. I do say that. I do believe in that, with some compromise because I do have to sell it on arena. Yeah, yeah. But but my point, what I was trying to say though is, I'll get a thousand good jobs, and there'll be one person that has a complaint, and that just worms in my brain, and yeah, I can't yeah. get over that, and I'm like, and then I I attack that the next year. So if using using the ice as an example, if I was planning your event and everybody's having a great time, I loved it, but we ran out of ice, there's going to be one asshole that's going to be like, you're going to see it on social media. Great camp out, <laughs> but they ran out of ice, one star. One star. <laughs> and it'll, well, the biker thing to do is just to come back and tell them, like, hey, fuck off. No, I know. I you got to be a punk rocker sometimes, dude, man. Come on, dude. You're right. You're right. I, and I'm learning. I'm Again, by losing my ass this year, I'm much more assertive than I've ever been. Yeah. Um, it's because it's the survival of everything that I have. It's the survival of my family. Um, yeah, I had to get, I had to, it's not a woe is me. I'm, I'm living a great life too. I, yeah, yeah. I'm living my best life. I really am. But I did have to get a job at a grocery store. <laughs> second, yeah. So I'm working second shift at a grocery store. Stock and ice cream, which is the best job I've ever so had. So check it out. The way I look at it, you know, from my perspective, I'm looking at the fact that you got your second job. It's at a grocery store, and you're you're such a you've you've built some such a big part of our industry. You don't like the word, uh, such a big part of our motorcycle culture, <laughs> and you're doing that. I mean, whether there's profitability in that or not, you're doing that for the embitterment of the culture, for sure. For sure. I mean, I mean, but but I want to I want to criticize myself. There's probably still more selfish means in it, meaning I get off. I I am searching for organizing events. So very selfishly, yeah. I'm I'm pushing culture. You're an event, event planner. You probably yes. have a good job like uh, planning parties, uh, yeah. weddings maybe. <laughs> I, I probably could make a living doing it, but I I don't like to do. But to, any that one thing. that mentality to do those things, and I, I feel like sometimes I I tap into that wavelength is a very selfless thing because you're putting yourself in every type of person you've ever met and logged in your head's uh, psyche to find out would they like my event or what sure. what is this th- their mentality now you're kind of understanding and be like I think they would do it so you're you're doing a very selfless thing by trying to um, I'm trying to find the way to articulate it you know to be honest with you but you know it's uh well, it, it, it's, you're it's very a, mindful of everybody else's time. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Being mindful. That, well, that's that's empathy. Um, I know, and I as much as I like, I put the crowd through the ringer by causing anxiety. I, I'll never, I, I, I'll never forget that my twenty dollar event cost them forty five to get in the door. You know, with the fees yeah. and the and the parking, and I appreciate your spending your night with me. That you trust that I'm going to give you a good time. The way I always say it is, well, if you want there to be more motorcycle-oriented events, you have to come to them, and you have to pay, and you have to support it. You know, sure. you're gonna like, or you can go to Medieval Times, nerd. You know what I mean? Y'all have that up here. <laughs> we do. We okay. do. I know exactly. What you're so talking you can about. go to Medieval Times and have fifty dollar meal and see some, you know, dude confess his love to a princess and yeah, joust yeah, yeah. and all this bullshit. But if you want to take your chick to a good exciting event sure and have some beers and see some fuckery an off an authentic an authentic event a thought to, yeah an authentic event yeah well <laughs> i think we've all i think we've almost panned this out i think we've, we've got all the trade secrets <laughs> I, I think we've we've mashed this out this uh, how to do a good event yeah I but think but, so. I, but i'm i'm taken from this I don't know. I appreciate your perspective on things. I, I guess this is what I, this is what I'm taking away from talking with you. I'm not alone. I, what I'm there are other people that are good people in this industry that believe in community, believe yeah. in, that believe in culture. I just don't ever hear it. I I'm, I'm so used to saying this again in a in a place like this on a Harley dealer, and them not just 
it just it's way it's way over their heads. They're like, do you want black grips or heated grips? Yeah, they don't ever they don't see the culture, the community. And I want to and I want to throw shade a little bit on the, like the, the Sturgis. I didn't see culture. Yeah, I saw a lot of. I don't know why for I don't know the reason why they're so angry, but a lot of angry middle-aged white dudes that are <laughs> uh, mad at the world. Um, and I didn't find the culture, other than the performance, this form of the performance stuff at Buffalo Chip. The, yeah, the like st- the FXR show. Yes. The the stunt uh, bell brawl. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because most of us aren't rich, and we're doing this for the love of it right now. Well, most of the people that drive riding out there are not rich. You know, they're riding on the on with you know a '97 Sportster from so- Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, it, true. Isn't I'm not. I, I mean, there's. There's millions of those people there everywhere. It's just people that just want to go to the end. But when you click it up, though, when you put these groups together that they identify with, you know, you have us that are kind of young and hungry and we're ambitious and we want to make, we want that capitalist kind of growth with our brands or or whatever. But you're not resting on, you're not resting. Yeah, we're not. You you are going to be in perpetual motion your whole life. I, I, I rode to Sturgis. I rode there. Then I rode to Yellowstone after that, then to Colorado, then to New Mexico, then came home for three weeks, and now I'm on a bike riding to Milwaukee, questioning if I want to ride to New York. All while I have a million things to do at my job and stuff, but. What's your job? Painting motorcycles and helmets. You So you still do that? All day long. So I don't make enough money doing a podcast to not do the other things, but I don't ever want to stop painting because it's. It might not be an appreciated art form in the art world. It's certainly appreciated. Depending, I mean, some people would say it ain't a fucking oil painting. That's for damn sure. Uh, but it, it, I like being creative. So that gives me creativity. I like photography. Sure, sure. Trying to capture um, these experiences that I have and and things. And uh, another thing, like I've always taken pictures of my work, and I've gotten decent at shooting my own paint jobs or my own experiences riding bikes, but this newfound love, I started an Instagram page. You might be able to uh, uh, appreciate this. I started an Instagram page for my photography, and this is air quotes, um, so that I would have a place to put things that didn't have anything to do with my business, Sure. right? So I could go take a picture of this guy and his bike shop that might do the same thing I do, but I really want to take a picture of him and I want to give him something for me and that page is a place to put that Mm -hmm. because if i put it on my personal page my my fast life garage did you build that did you paint that and then they just a clusterfuck but this other page is just about pictures sure and so it's a place to uh to feed that what's the can you say can we say the instagram name oh yeah (laughs) uh the it's fast life visuals got it okay so it's still branded all the same shit like i'm i'm kind of stuck on the branding but um it's just fun, man. And, and you know, when COVID happened, it was like, not that I ever had any free time in this thing, but I felt like, you know what, while the world shut down, I want to come out of it with a new skill or with a new something. Sure. So, you know? so would that be photography? Yeah. And, and don't be wrong. I've been fucking with a camera for like five years. Right. But I dove, I dove deep into it this, this, this last, you know, six, seven, eight months now. Um, watch like i I put a big screen tv above my workbench while i'm doing airbrushing and pinstriping and all that and i literally watch photography videos all day long about editing photos taking like composition shit i don't don't really want to take pictures of like models but i would study it just to kind of have an understanding of the practice you know of the lighting and the shade yeah exactly and so it's like a fun of it it's a fun thing to do in practice but it also does help everything else that i do so well, it, it, it creates the complete person that you are. I mean, right? You can't take one without the other. You, you have a, 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 a soft inside, and that's a compliment, not a criticism no, at all. I, I, I definitely you, do. <laughs> and you're in tune with it. Yeah. And you know it, and you're articulate about it, and you're, um, you're, that's your flag that you're flying, and I appreciate it. So you don't have to justify that you take photos. I think that makes you the well-rounded human that you are. Thank you. That's a much appreciated, <laughs> man. But yeah, it's, uh, I'm just not, you know, like I, I don't really do a good job of uh, articulating things very well. I, and, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, different. I'm disagreeing with you. I think you're very articulate. I think the things that you have said and the perspective you have um, 
has resonated with me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I grew up, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, um, I got it. I came into the motorcycle industry um, right at the middle of the biker build-off series, the TV thing, and the and I saw real superstars in the motorcycle world. I, I, I got to. I didn't meet them, but I got to be like from here to the end of this table from a Jesse James mm-hmm. or a Billy Lane or these like mega stars that kind of help shape our industry and um you know and i've always thought like you know i saw how big it was and i saw it fall apart and and disappear almost and then i i saw social media come back or 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 become something to expose cultures right what instagram did i think instagram was is like a very underappreciated tool in the world that exposed people to travel Mm -hmm. food Mm -hmm. culture um all with pictures without without your bullshit leave your Mm -hmm. leave your bullshit out of it that picture of monument valley or that picture of uh traveling through some part of london or Mm -hmm. that food choice in, in brazil those things were they resonated really well with me and made me fall in love with the power of a picture sure and a little bit of a little bit of thought like let me give you this picture what does that do to you sure which is what art is supposed to do right yeah absolutely it's supposed to change your perspective it's supposed to make you think it's supposed to make you what does this mean to me like what is this and so like uh bikes man like bikes i think are a really good antidepressant a good um a good way to make the the quiet kid the loud kid you know and um, you know, like you said, you reference punk rock and things like that, and and just music in general is a good way to get people on a wavelength. And sure, yeah, it all just works well, man. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, dude. I'm no, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're, 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 I know exactly what you're saying. And what what you what I'm this is what makes me, me again. Maybe I'm not as um, unique as I thought I was. I, I thought about talking about art in in a Harley dealership <laughs> is not understood, but you're. You're showing the art in the motorcycle. It's, there's, dude. There's art in everything, man. There is art in everything. There's art in design and everything for sure. But I don't know if the, the a lot of the people that come in here can articulate that art. I don't. I don't know how to. I really don't know how to. Uh, probably super effectively make it presented as art. It's more presented as art down the line. Dude, this is deep as fuck. <laughs> well, well, you, will you, will you paint your. Tell me about your painting a little bit. You, what, what, what's your special? Uh, well, um, I paint helmets mainly, but I grew up painting motorcycles. So, well, what, like, there's, there's got to be a specific kind. I'm not going to come to you and say, hey, I want you to paint um, this guy. Uh, I want you to paint a sunset of the guy riding a motorcycle. Yeah, so it's not like a not like a David Mann thing or right, some right. shit like that. So what's, which, your, what's your specialty? So right? my specialty, you know, custom paint in the motorcycle world has always been about graphics, whether it's like your flame job or your scallops of the of the fifties and stuff, or the low rider panel thing that took place in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, to the airbrushed murals uh, mm-hmm. theme bikes of the two thousands, and then now it's kind of like a mashup of all these different cultures. Or not cultures, but yeah, well, cultures actually. Um, from your rockabilly hot rod guys to your low rider guys mm-hmm. to your your heartbeat of America truck guys and mini truck guys in the two thousand or nineties and your chopper dudes. It's like all my industry is very young. You know what I mean? Like custom paint is painting is not young, but custom paint on automotive applications is a sixty seventy year old thing. You know what I mean? So. I don't have a Van Gogh or a, or, or a, um, a Picasso or a Da Vinci in my lineage with with what I do for a living. You know, I, I might have an H.R. Geiger, sure, you sure. know, um, or a Von Dutch or a Rat Fink or you. Know, I mean, uh, Ron. Fuck, I, I'm bad now. I forgot his fucking name. The guy that created Rat Fink. You know the fucking yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but so me, you know, I'm just I'm I'm just using all these things that somebody else created, and mashing them together and turning them into my own personal um influenced art and then right now that's where i'm at i'm at a good point where i actually have my own style but i don't you know i don't know where that'll be in 10 years you know maybe sure. it'll be a, it's completely morphed into something mm-hmm. else but 
I've also been at a point where I've been trying to get people to value what I do as art and not as a material possession because a paint job is just another thing on the wall for most people to add to their build. Sure. Oh, I need a paint job. I need an exhaust. I need handlebars. I need a seat. Then it's done. Well, everything else was sitting on the wall. The paint job is the one thing that has to be created by, quote, unquote, an artist. Sure. Not that, yeah, you can argue other things are art, too, but, you know. Then we're like, okay, well, is a builder a builder because they assemble or they have to make the frame and make the rubber for the tires and make the motor? You know what I mean? It's one of those rabbit holes. No, I get it. I get it. Oh, here, this is what I'm thinking while you're talking about uh, painting. What, what if I mailed you my oil tank and my uh, and my tank? Would you and and I'll pay you whatever, mm -hmm. and you you use the inspiration of our conversation to paint a tank, uh, a, a gas tank and an oil in the oil tank. Yeah, for sure, man. I got it. I got it. I got a bike. It's got a decent paint job on it, but it got hit, scratched. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if I'm going to get the tank, is that what you do? If I'm going to get yeah. the tank? So, you know, that's a good point you just brought up that I actually want to say. There's something about when I fell in love with the vintage chopper community, I saw these people nerd out on certain products from the 50s. This is an original Wassel tank. Sure. I want that. I don't want to repop. I want the original. And it made me think, well, and then I started seeing that there's this whole culture of people that want to have original West Coast choppers parts. They were made in the early 2000s. There's a whole community of people that collect that. That stuff, doesn't, they don't make it anymore? They don't make it anymore. The West Coast Jarvis is totally dead? No, they're around, but the, the production of products like oh, really? air cleaners and you know that, things of, like of that. that. Of that style? Yeah. Because they, they're still producing stuff, Yeah, right? they still make bikes, but there's just not a, uh, there's not a catalog that you can go order air cleaners and foot controls. They just, uh, they just uh, build bikes now. Okay. Right? So... We talked about legacy earlier. I, If I'm not being arrogant, I wanted my legacy. To me, a successful legacy would be like in 15 years, my custom helmets would be something that is a collectible item. Sure, sure. Or a tank. Like I painted this tank for you, and then, you know, you sold the bike, but for some reason you just didn't want to let go of the tank. So you bought another tank to have a random bullshit paint job put on it because this tank had more value to you sure. as art. Right? And so it's, it's you don't you don't think you're there yet. I I think I'm, you know I, I think it's always an eventual process of becoming at that point. But what I think is I had to to uh, for lack of a better term I had to retrain the audience to look at it that way. Sure. Well, like when I get a tattoo, I tell the tattooist the philosophy. I'm willing to send you my tank, and I've never even seen your art. I've never even looked at your tank. Yeah. Because I know who you are as a person, and I trust you philosophically. I'd want you to paint my bike. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, do you do you get into that into that like uh, that that candy coated like or the mirror the, the the tinted frames like the? Oh, we do a lot of candy and flake and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's you know there's there's lots of envelopes in the uh, custom paint world. I, I don't I don't particularly care about that stuff. I'm just curious your knowledge of it. Yeah, I mean I. I you know, when it comes to the capitalist side of this or the uh, monitor monetization side of this, um, you know, you have to kind of you have to f give the audience what they deem is uh, popular. Sure. And give them that originally and then slowly work it towards where you want it okay. to be. The way that I say that with the exact point you're saying this is a phrase that I say. I want to give the consumer not what they want, but what they need. Mm hmm. Right, so if you're DJing music, like play some more Metallica. You're like Metallica. Hey, listen, man, how about this Hawkwind? Like they never heard of them, but like, yeah. oh, I like this. Yeah, this is just what you need right now. Some yeah, Hawk but if Wind. you ask them right off the <laughs> bat, let me play this. They're already going into to a bias, right? Yes, that's right. But if you just DJ it into that's it, that's right. They're like, oh man, this one's hitting, man. That's right. Same way, I, I make myself listen to uh, like Spotify with random songs. Yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah while I'm working so that I can discover new music. Sure. Because Spotify's been fantastic for that. Yeah. So if I if I uh, only go to my library on my phone and listen to this album over and over again, like I'll enjoy it, but I won't. You know what it's like when you fucking find a new song mm -hmm. or a new band that's like speaking to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, damn, and I what else you, they got? <laughs> it gets harder as you get older. It is. My tastes tend to be narrowing. Dude, you know what? I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say this. I've gone through a phase over the last like two months of like, chick music well not chick what? music like uh like alanis morissette or nothing like that but like like there's this chick it's a chick band actually let me let me back up i started listening to there's this one chick called uh 
she was in a band called Honey Honey, and it turned into, uh, fuck, I don't remember her name, what she, but she was on Rogan, uh, the, and I listened to her, I was like, that sounds pretty good, kind of country-ish, I'm not sure, really sure, a sure. huge country fan, but I can dig a good guitar and a good, a good voice. Um, and then I started watching this thing on YouTube called Jam in the Van. Yeah, I've seen it. Dude, I fucking literally put it on like a like on YouTube and just all these bands, small, big, whatever, mm -hmm. from like Gary Clark Jr. to all these other people that are in there and it to like electronic music even. Mm -hmm. And it's made me appreciate electronic music because sure. I didn't before. Well, you 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 got the sense of the personality of the person making it. You sense their authenticity. You 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 felt it was real. You, well, you see them playing it. What about this? Like when you go to a concert, cer certain songs become like if you like. I'm a huge Tool fan, right? And there's songs that I did not like just playing the song in a CD in the car, but when I saw it live, sure, that song was now my favorite song. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, I feel like when I watch it on YouTube and I see them create the music right there in that jam in the van thing, I'm like, now I can listen to this mm -hmm. thing on, on the radio without it. makes it. sense to me now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird, man. It's weird how we work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 you say you're not articulate. I, I, I listen. I appreciate how you have a command of, of this world as much as we can. Yeah. Particularly with your art side of things. And, and, and in this industry, to roll up in this shop, I think that this shop, I keep saying this shop, this shop I think is is more on the, maybe with this new guy, Tommy. Yeah. They're progressing a little bit. But this place has been more of a Fleetwood Mac kind of a vibe. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, that does. Well, that that's the thing about Tommy and about what he has, his, he's done in Texas and what he is clearly doing is he here. Come, is he, did he come from Texas? Yeah. Here? yeah. Um, he He's just open-minded to um, just because this is how it's been and this is how what's worked doesn't mean this will always work. Sure. And he understands about create. He understands about playing the long game with with uh, influence. Mm -hmm. You know, which it really gets dirty when you think about it. Like when you're you're really trying to change people's perception of something. So you think about how to do that, and it becomes like a weird thing to me. At least it it gets. I feel dirty, like I'm doing something to you that you don't know you're not, that I'm doing. It's almost like if I'm like taking pictures of you and going and beating off in the corner or sure, some sure. shit. You know, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're stealing from people. Yeah, I'm stealing. I'm 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 influent or I'm trying to do something to. In, that's marketing 100. percent But I'm trying to influence their decisions based on something I presented to them. Well, you're, you're saying that you do that now and you, and you feel bad for it. At times, when I think about it in that way, I just put it, <laughs> when, I, when I equate it to jerking off in a corner. <laughs> well, but I don't think you lie. You're like, this is who I am. This is my essence. And if you don't like it, then, then you know. So I, the reason why I feel like I'm doing it from a good place is because I feel like, you know what? I want to influence you to do cool shit and find the happiness that I found in it. Sure. So it's like, I'm not only a client, or I'm not only the owner, but I'm a client. Sure, you know, sure. like this is something that I found that I want to share with you. And you think that Tommy shares that? Shares that? I do that because idea he's a biker. You. He's into bikes and he's into uh, into how it feels to ride a bike and how it feels to. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you're not an asshole. I mean, dude, I'm an asshole. If you ask anybody, you haven't caught. This is just three beers, bro. I, I, again, I don't. However, you get when you drink <laughs> yeah. is not the essence of who you are now. You know, I don't think True. I don't think you would ever be an asshole. <laughs> I'm gonna screen. I'm gonna actually keep that clip <laughs> and use it for other things later on. Your Honor, he said I wasn't an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you you have too much humility and empathy. Yeah. Well, I think that also brings out in conversations because when you're around somebody that that puts you in that state of mind. You tap into that different frequency. That's sure. A, that I think we have a lot of different frequencies. Sure. Well, I also think, though, based on our, our conversation, you have um, a confidence that maybe potentially could border on arrogance because you have a strong confidence. Definitely. And um, I think that's a I think that's a great thing to have. I think that's one thing I'm missing. Yeah, it's it creates a lot of humility because sometimes you confidently walk. I like to call it confidently ignorant. Sure. You know, when you're confident about it, but you're not 100% sold, but you're like, fuck it, I'm running with it, you know? You just, uh, that's how I feel about it. Well, a lot. you don't, you also seem like you don't mind taking chances. Well, yeah, because, I mean, fuck, man, like, you took a chance creating what you did. Well, you know? 
sure, but it was a calculated chance. <laughs> I mean, I calculated, but my my calculations are kind of like fingers. On one, sure, yeah, and not like some spreadsheet. So, <laughs> well, let, let me let me say just one one more thing that I, I didn't. Uh, I, flat out Friday, I didn't know it was going to be something. I thought it was just going to be what it was that one time. Yeah, that's that's as far as I could see. Um, I'd like to think that I'm trying to reinvent it. I'm still trying to stay relevant in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have some ideas and some events coming up. But my point is, I never would have thought that my little show would resonate with people in Cleveland and. And in Boise, Idaho, mm-hmm. um, that these people are really excited to, to ride motorcycles. Um, Megan, who um, goes our, connected us, mm-hmm. you know her from? I don't. Know. Oh, um, did you meet her? Was she here today? I have no idea. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just ignorantly confident here, buddy. Okay. <laughs> anyway, she, I've seen her at the flat track, and I was like, hey, why don't you just try this bike? Um, and so th- my point is that I think I got her hooked. And people are hooked to participate in, in Flat Out Friday. And but one more thing that's not that I think is important to recognize. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier that the philosophy of Flat Out Friday was to get bikers together of mm-hmm. different genres, which seemed radical six years ago. Um, did you get performance guys and flat trackers in the same room and they would get along and party and exchange ideas? Yeah. Um, but what's but what's happening now with with the the, the cultural landscape? Is it's dawned on me that man, how did this is a little bit uncomfortable conversation, but I think it's important that um, how did we get to be just so white, so monocultural uh, in in the in my chopper world? Yeah, and um, I've actively tried to get involved with other communities, ethnicities, basically. Yeah, with other ethnicities, other other cultural groups in the city, and so and I mean I did it at first very light. I'd go to events. Maybe, and I'm going to speak very ignorant here because I don't know, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Do you think that, you know, my, my kids are mixed with black. You know, I, my wife is white, but my previous relationships, and I grew up in a very um, black neighborhood, sure. if you will. Um, I, and a lot of my customers growing up were black, and I noticed what they valued. And not to say what they valued isn't valuable. Sure. But I just noted that, noticed that their culture – puts value in different areas sure and then the vintage chopper culture that's not really a time that i think black culture mm-hmm. values yeah for sure for sure i think that's the major difference of of a white middle class um we, you know one of the things i talk about a lot or, or have trying to trying to understand by the way i've only just begun to understand or try to question things is the idea of like being ghetto fabulous my, my yeah. point is us as a working class we put money in the bank and we save and we push oh, wait. our family. That's working class. I don't have. And we <laughs> and we what we we believe in that system. I, to be ghetto fabulous is to not have a pot to piss in, but you got rims and and you and that what that value is is respect and yeah. that respect is currency, far more, the, far far more concrete than 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 money. You yeah. know, is respect. And again, I'm not saying one or the other. In fact, I've learned a ton. No, that's a good point. That's exactly it. By thinking, by by trying to see that perspective, but so I've I've been putting it out there for years, trying to go to black events, Latino events, and like trying to like trying to name drop. Will you ever hear Mama tried? No. <laughs> yeah. And and it's so humbling that uh, we could create this world, this event that is you know United States or global influenced, but my own community doesn't know who I am so that's a good point yeah I, I know exactly what you mean so we've I've really pressed to try to get my my issues for the last couple of months has been trying to create multicultural events um, and, and to understand that's good let me pause this I gotta pee and I want to talk about this is so I've been to I've been to like Myrtle Beach Black Bike Week hmm. I've been to what they call the um the roundup which is kind of like the black sturgis mm. and it's like it tours where, where is it everywhere what do you mean it's everywhere oh it tours they tour so like one one time it'll be in memphis one time it'll be in it. tulsa oklahoma got it and does one, it change the times of year or it's usually around after sturgis okay like in the august time where was it this year or was I, it this year? I, I haven't been in touch with it in a got while it. um it's called roundup yeah it's called the the national roundup or something like okay. that um but myrtle beach you know myrtle beach has like 
a bike week that's like a month long, but one or two weeks long, but one week it's black bike week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other week it's the normal white dude. The value system that I've noticed when I'm when you're around, you know, like I said, I want to be real careful with this because I don't want to well, say the wrong word. Well, but let me say, let me say this. Let me just before we wait, race talking about race is difficult. Yeah, and 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 so I, I say that to only to relax to, to anybody listening. Our our we're, our heart is in the right place as we yeah. stumble through this new language, right? Yeah. So I would say that like when I was hanging out with these guys, uh, which I'm still good friends with all of them. You know, one of my best friends. Uh, he he's the one that took me to Myrtle Beach. Um, the value system was more of like I want to have a really nice bike. I want to go here and I want to pick up chicks, and I want to be respected. I want to have the nicest bike in this group. I want all the guys here to respect me for what I've I've bought or created, mm-hmm. and I want all the pussy. <laughs> yeah, but you just described. I don't know what you described the white side or the black side of that. Pretty much every man possible, yes. right? But, um, but they they actually come through with it. You know that's why their bikes are always more flamboyant than maybe some people's in, in our side, sure, or maybe sure. like the chopper scene. The chopper scene maybe is more touched into the uh, the history of it. Like sure, they're 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 tapped into the uh, all those other elements, right? Underlying is I want to get all the vagina here. Sure, you know, and I want all the guys to respect me. But it's just. There's two different ways that people express what they want, and well, I think that's... There's thousands of ways yeah. to people express that, right? That's yeah. what makes it so great. But if one, let's just say like one of the brothers <laughs> um, has the nicest bike with the loudest stereo, the, the nicest wheels, the nicest paint, and is physically in the best shape, sure, sure. they're more likely to get the chicks. So therefore, you know, it's, it's just, that's just... The same shit across the board. <laughs> that doesn't matter. You, but so the difference remote, remote is... Control, remote control car racing is yeah. the same culture. But see, like, the difference that I've noticed is that, like, black chicks are there, too, because they want that. They encourage that. They want to be with these dudes that are like this. I feel like a lot of times in certain areas of, of like, the white side, women are looking more for much more commitments and things like that. They They're, they're not... See that it's it's touchy, man. Because no, I don't I want to it. generalize that much. No, you know it. what I mean? I get it. Well, that's just your perspective. That that's your sense of things. Yeah. That you sense that the women, the white women, and you're saying are more uh, conservative, if you will, maybe, if you will. Yeah. Like I don't. I mean, I know there are. That's the thing. That that's why it's such a generalization. I know there's a bunch of white chicks that. I don't see it as much. Maybe they exist in certain scenes, like in the more popular circles. But I've noticed in like going to Myrtle Beach, there'll be a bus of fucking badass chicks coming down from New York to, you know, be there and and show themselves off in the same manner that the men are showing themselves off. That's a that's a a tiny nuance that I didn't even I think about. I don't I don't have an opinion on it. I guess it's a tiny nuance because we you know we're we're bordering on the difference between race. We're having that conversation. We haven't even got into sex. Like that's a whole nother yeah conversation. So that's what I'm saying. So one breeds the other. Men are going to do more on that side to make their bikes this or make. Whatever it is, maybe it's their cars, or maybe it's the ghetto fabulous thing. But, sure. and I don't mean to say that like these dudes don't have careers and things like that. It's just the quote unquote like the peacocking of like getting sure. the attention, and then the women are doing the same thing, and it seems like everybody's there on an agreement. They're like, look, we're here to fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's what it is, or that's what it feels like. And that's why I feel like those events and and our events don't really, or the 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 white events, if you will. Uh, don't seem to have the same thing. But then there's all these, and when it comes to like, say the performance bike thing that I'm into, there's not a lot of black people that I know of, but there are quite a few, more than I would say I see in the chopper sure. side. Sure. And, you know, they kind of th- go with the narrative of what we're all doing, if you will. You know, and um, I like, I, don't know, I, I try not to get wrapped up in it, but. I feel like if any of those black dudes came to the camp out, they'd probably have a good time. They just might have to get used to hanging out with a bunch of dudes. Well, sure, <laughs> you know? sure. That, so that so when I when I organize events and I and I would put the call out like, hey, well, you know, why don't any black folks come to Mama Tried or Flat Out Friday? And and for years I would let that settle. I would I would brush that. 
and accept that as the answer. Yeah. But the truth be told, I, I need to actively get the word out. I need to actively recruit. I need to actively integrate. Okay. Yeah. But but and, but also, I'm, I'm my end goal is to not is to not get is to not make one Myrtle Beach. That's not one. That's not my goal. Is to bring humanity together. I just want to make sure that my events are exposed to all people. Yeah. And and uh, I believe that just like your camp out. Sure, the music's different or whatever. The you know the the the, the cultural mores are different. But it doesn't matter what you're doing. You have a, a black guy and a white guy, a white woman or a black woman drinking a beer around a campfire. They're the same. Yeah, it's all the same. The s- I just find it really hard to uh, to add that level of responsibility to it. For me, like as somebody, like I said, I've, I've spent a lot of my life. I grew up playing basketball. I, I played on teams where it was nothing but I'm the only white guy. Sure, sure. And I'm in the hoodest of the hoods of different cities. Sure, but, sure. You know, it just it was just the culture, and I loved it. I mm-hmm. loved every bit of it. Um, but I don't know. It, it's it, it would take an amazing human being to be that catalyst, to be the middleman between cultures, to bring them together. You know, and for you know when when it, I would say that when Obama got elected, and I'm not trying to be politics. I'm just using him as an example. When he got elected, I was proud for my kids that are mixed. Sure, their 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 black heritage, their white heritage. It was really nice to see that. Um, it just sucks that now that you know the internet is the internet, and it could be the great thing to pull us together sure. and rip us apart. Sure. And so, um, I don't know, man. I, I agree that you could, again, you could have. I'm a radical with my politics, and I never talk about it, but I can get along with anybody else on the other spectrum of the radicalness because I know that there's common threads. Yeah. We, we, we all ultimately want the same things. Yeah. But, but let me tell you this, though. Um, I didn't. So a couple weeks ago, we um, organized a, 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 a multicultural ride um, in honor of, a, of a, a guy that had passed uh, recently. Was killed in a, in a, on, a on a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. No, nothing wasn't anybody's fault. Just happened to die. Young, good-looking kid with a young wife and kids, um, with a, from a mixed family. Yeah. And so we put the word out that I, I put the, I posted the flyer as this is the most important ride you'll ever ride. Um, we got 200 people of mixed race, and we, we, we shut down the city. It was just, it was so exciting to ride in this group and to be, to be uneasy. When, when I started, this is, this is how I used a new language, how I got in the position now to, to organize these multicultural rides. Before, I would think I would have to lead these rides. Mm-hmm. I'd get a, I'd go to a, this is how I thought it would be. i go to a black group, and I'm like, okay, guys, I'm leading this ride. Will you guys follow me? But it's always going to end up with the same results. Mm-hmm. This is my new language. I will fund and pay for a black-led ride, mm-hmm. right? So, so that's why I'm that's that's how I'm guaranteeing. If I can get my crew to believe in it and follow me, I can. Then now we're going to guarantee to have a multicultural ride, mm-hmm. right? Because it's because it's black-led. But here's the moral of my story. Next uh, next Saturday, the 26th, I am working with every black MC in the city. We're trying to bring nine, we're trying to do 900 people. That's our That's goal, cool. uh, to really shut down the city on the 26th. Um, so we just got Harley backing for that. They just put their, they finally, whatever, they go through legal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just put the corporate logo on our flyer. That's cool. Um, that they believe in it too. Those things, man, that takes a lot of courage, man, to uh, to put yourself out there and to, to try to do that because not that you're gonna get hate for it by any means, not that, sure. but it's just, it's really hard to, uh, you know, it's really hard to take my white friends and my black friends and say, hey, look, you know, because no, I, I kind of, I probably act a certain way around my white friends and I probably act a certain way around my black friends. It's still me. It's just, sure, I'm, I'm focusing on more of an aspect of me in one area and the other. You sure. know what I mean? So I, I get that, man. It's tough. Um, and it's that, you know, kudos for that, man, because like I said, that's a very, uh, that's a strong thing to do, man. Well, it isn't necessarily that it's, the only thing that's tough is not being in control. So we've had meetings, and now, you know, we're supposed to meet at this place, now we're meeting at this place, and, and my first reaction is, well, that's not what we agreed upon, but I need to let go. And like, yeah. that's how they organize it. And, and it's really badass. They've done these rides before. I haven't on a chopper. Yeah. I haven't, I hadn't had the balls to stop traffic, which would, they'll, you know, they'll yeah. roll up and yep. people are yelling at them, but you know we're and we're they don't give a fuck and they don't and they don't yeah. i don't have that i don't have that assertion 
Well, you know, like uh, the the hypocritical side of this to me is that I want the same thing you want, but I also look at the world like anytime there's two options, there's always going to be opposition. And so when you got people of one type of, you know, like it, it always seems to work that way. Segregation sure. naturally goes the way it goes. And um, it's really hard to, I don't know. No matter what, it feels like everybody's going to go back to their comfort zone, which is going to be their like mind itself. For sure, they're 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 absolutely going to go back to their comfort zone. But there's a philosophy that we have a riders meeting and like we're bikers first, and and although you may go back, that's got to stick with you. That's got to be a seed that's planted in you. Yeah. Um, just being a teacher, I, I put some radical ideas, radical self empowerment ideas. I'm always throwing those seeds out there. Like, for example, uh, showing my students like what, what a jet mechanic is. Now, my yeah. kids aren't going to be jet mechanics, but let's watch this video about jet mechanics. But I believe that there'll be one kid that will be inspired to try to take up mechanics of some kind. Yeah. And so my point is uh, we're bikers first. That's a good point because, honestly, man, most of the things that I wish that would happen to me in my high school years, I wish I would have been exposed to more things that aren't, like, on the flyers in the college handbooks. For sure. You know, lawyer, doctor, computer programmer. Uh, if you want to be, yeah, you know, a nurse. carpenter, nurse, yeah. that, and then there's these all these there's all these fields in between. Yeah, there's millions of jobs. Yeah, millions of different jobs. Like, oh you can shit, get. that's a job. That looks fun and that looks creative and that looks challenging. Yeah, yeah. And then bam, touches right into it. So, well, so I'm trying to expose the idea of getting along as as humans. Mm -hmm. um, again, po politically uh, and racially. Yeah, and when I when I bring my chopper there too, like man, how do you ride that? It's got the skinny little bars on there, and how do you ride that? It's got, it's it's so low to the ground, yeah. you know, and uh, it's a, it's a great. Here's here's my only criticism of it. A first ride, we rode where we were gonna ride, and then everybody broke off. Mm -hmm. When we rode, we we rode the first ride came together. We're in an alley, a bunch of white chopper dudes, you know, the black contingency rolled up. I envisioned it, everyone getting off their bikes and hugging. But it wasn't. It was like a little uncomfortable stare down, you know. Yeah. We all rode together, but if you know, that that's how deep and how long it's going to take until we can start breaking down these walls, and it's going to take constant multicultural rides. We just did one two weeks ago. We're doing another one at the end of this month. You know, if they happen once a month, it would be fantastic. But, well, it also like maybe going to their events. Oh, for sure. Versus also inviting them specifically to your events. Well, specifically, I, I say that repeatedly, like my, I'm sincere in wanting you to, to come with me and I want to come with you. That's why I'm paying for you to lead this group. Uh, Cause I don't want it to be seen that I'm just exploiting. Yeah. I'm just explaining. I really do believe in it. I, the, the, I told you the mom and tried culture is to bring people together and talk about bikes, get the same people in the room and create and explode some ideas. I can't wait to see what would happen if you took chopper dudes. And I don't know what you would even call the, the I think the black, bike from what i saw is still a big front wheel yellow bike usually yellow and it's got like the fins on the bag yeah they're they're uh i mean they're different all over i mean you go to what, what do you call that kind of bike though what is that uh i mean i'm sure they would have their own their own uh lingo for it but i would say that it's just a uh <laughs> there's no good way to is say it, it. Would it, would it, would, i would put it under the performance umbrella True. Yeah. No. That, I wouldn't that, put it under the chopper. In California, <laughs> these dudes in California and Texas, like a lot of these dudes are not really so much interested in the big wheel. Is they want fast bikes that have like, you know, loud paint jobs and sure. and and you know they they ride though, dude. That's the thing about it, man. Those motherfuckers ride. Sure. You know, they're I like, was oh. humbled by the riding. Yeah. At the last ride we did, when you're blocking intersection and then get to the front of the line. In the wrong lane. I rode with a, bike, a black bike club from Dallas to Panama Beach once. And I learned, and I was a president at the time of, of a, my small motorcycle club. And this motorcycle club invited me to come with them. And um, I learned so much, like, as a president of things on that ride with how to, how to conduct myself, how to ride and where to ride and what to do to lead big groups and things like that. And I'm not in bike clubs anymore, but... You know, just being around those dudes. I, mean, I had some of the times of my life riding with these dudes. Sure. But it's easy when it's just me. Like I don't I don't feel like I have to be this guy around these guys. When I'm just I'm only I'm vulnerable and I'm just like going with the flow and you know, I'm more attentive to like their culture and how they do things and it's just I, I liked it. I Man, I had a good time. Sure. That could, again, yeah. that, there's some themes there with who you are. You're empathetic. 
and you, you know, you see, and you see, you see the best, and you're also articulate. So when you're in a room and you're scanning and watching the handshakes and the mores and the, how the people say hello, um, let me let me tell you this one more one more story about this real quick. When I when I first started teaching, um, I, I went to teaching school and they taught you all about how to be a teacher. And um, I applied to be a history teacher. I have a history mm -hmm. degree. I didn't get that job. I got a job teaching social studies to EBD. That stands for Emotional Behavior Disorder Students. So mm -hmm. students that are in the basement fighting, you know, by the engineer's office. That's, you know, that's where I am. Yeah. As long as you just shut the door, Proc, you can do whatever you want. That's my last name. Uh, and when a teaching in that setting, it was like teaching in Mexico. Yeah. I, I didn't know the language. I didn't know the handshakes. I took years to just ask questions. Um, and that's what it's going to take for us to ride together, years of questions, because mm -hmm. our cultures have are so separated. And we don't study the black culture. We think because it's America, it's not Mexico, but it's very Mexico. It's, 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 it's so that, insular. I think on the capitalist side of things, we definitely study their culture as how to sell more things to it. but. We don't understand it's the essence of it. We don't. Sure. We don't. We don't cap. We don't. We don't study that part, and that part gets uh, eluded out of the fact, and it gets lumped into some very ignorant thinking, in sure. my opinion. And um, then when you're actually when you have that ignorant idea of it, and you actually meet someone, and they're, you know, some of the 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 best advice I've ever gotten in my life is from old gangbangers from Compton. Sure. Who have turned their life around and now do the crazy things and still have that hood mentality will where they'll fucking kill a dude. Sure. But, you know, <laughs> I've changed my life. I have a four one K now, you know what I mean? And there it, it's it's you know, I'm thinking about them now in my head and how much I how how long it's been since I've you know, spoke to them, but yeah, dude. Those things uh I think that if every human every race could find somebody from every culture and ethnicity that could uh, show them just who they are, then it would always change your mind of who they are as a whole. Sure. That was like somebody that was uh, inspiring and things like that. Not just because then when you see the crazy, for lack of a better term, ignorant shit you would see online or on TV or some black dude walking up and hitting the back of some old white man, which outrages everybody. Sure. And then if you know black people or Mexican people or anybody and you know how amazing some of these guys are or a lot of them are, then you don't take that as all them. Sure. You know what I mean? So you, you don't have real racism in you. You, you, uh, you have perspective is what it is. Sure. And then you see fucking fucked up white people. <laughs> and, and then you realize, I don't want to go to bat for anybody here. I just, like, there's more than the two people <laughs> you're well showing. said, on. I'm not going to bat for anybody. Yeah. We're all fucked up. And then some of us are all good. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, this is deep. I appreciate this. Yeah. We're going to church. <laughs> well, uh, we didn't really talk much about motorcycles, but we talked about humanity. Well... <laughs> <laughs> but that's what Flat Out Friday is. It, it, motorcycles, that's it, easy. That takes care of itself. How can we get people together to appreciate it, the culture of it? I mean, we, we, were, we were just repeating. I'm just re I'm, I'm summarizing. Yeah. The motorcycles are, of course, it's the energy and it's the love. But there's so many great things with the people that come together. I, I told you that I just didn't, I didn't like the motocross culture i thought it to be angry um mm -hmm. i'm sure there's good people there i'm not criticizing it but damn there's some good people in this new modern age of motorcycle racing yeah with the hooligan and the performance and the stunt bikes and even what's been growing around here the mini bikes the pull star yeah. mini bikes those are it's my one of my biggest classes yeah i, I could have i could have a hundred of those guys yeah that's a good thing man it's it's good and then, you know what what you're doing is awesome and i think it's uh Hopefully, like my audience is, it will find interest in it if they haven't already. You know what I mean, and find their way to a Cleveland show or you know wherever we're yeah, allowed to I fucking do it. I anymore. don't know where it's going to be. I don't know when. We are set for February. Uh, don't buy a plane ticket yet. Yeah. But uh, we're we're looking for the NBA to to lead us. I'm looking to see what the NBA is going to do. Mm -hmm. I think that they have kind of been the leaders in the sport industry, and they they just announced they're not going to go back till December. It's their next season. And if they have fans, then we're a go. 
but if they're in a bubble again, uh, I don't think we're going to have a, an event till 2022. Man, you know, Handle some of us event. feel like it's going to this shit's going to go away in a month. Well, okay, so I mean, I, I get this a lot. Again, respecting um, everybody's views on it, um, I've been following just the CDC website, and we can talk about the conspiracy of that. But I believe that that website, um, but that puts out those numbers, is what every every mayor, every governor, every senator is looking at. Yeah. And when those numbers, you have to be smart. They're going up and they're going down, and then they they can study it to see where it's going up and going down. I um, mean, that's how you manage. Uh, manage it but it's so hard when it flares up here and then it doesn't here and so my point is these numbers are not they're not we are we are as were we were worse than we were when we were March 11th which is the day it it went down the day the day America shut down our numbers are not moved mm -hmm. and so we you can't wish it away because the people, the policymakers are watching these numbers, and and, and I'm not talking. What is reality when you try to debate with someone about the news? It's impossible. It's really hard to you know what <laughs> I mean. But it's also it's also hard to you know like I said, it, 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 you know I try to avoid these type of things because my ignorance in it is sometimes I just want to be the the gun-toting American, fuck this, Constitution, this. And then, you know, and I respect that. And I and I understand that I understand that if, if shit hit the fan, all these different things that don't get along right now is a shit that nobody else in the world wants to fuck with. Sure. Because we don't disagree. We agree on a lot of things, but, you know, or we disagree on a lot of things, but we all have a, uh, a way of being each other's weekends or weak points. Sure. You know? You might need some of a uh, some 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 empathy and some and some consideration and some uh, what's the word uh, some some nuance and some thought to go in things and then sometimes you need that fucking dude that just is like show me where to shoot <laughs> you know what I mean no I get it you know like you need these different every, things. every team so, every team has different players you know yeah they play different roles you and that's how things win so um, but when we don't have anything to fight right now <laughs> other than ourselves it gets kind of hard because you know. It's the jocks versus the nerds. It's the it's this is versus. It's always the verses, right? Sure. Well, the verses is is a way is an easy way. I heard this. This is a headline from the Onion. Uh, stereotypes are, are there to save time, and uh, that's where I think we're at. It's, it's so there's so much information. It's changing so rapidly. We hold on to these stereotypes because it's so hard. How else can you decipher through this mm -hmm. this craziness? We're, well, we're, I mean, we're on a four hour news cycle, right? Yeah. I mean, well, the thing that sucks with that being said is that because news became so loose and so driven by advertisement because nobody wanted to pay for sure. magazines because nobody wanted to pay for well, so newspapers it's all, it's clickbait exactly so news has turned into a uh, i'm gonna put this out there because the clicks sell the thing and then you know and then we'll we'll, start we'll do the rebuttable later. later yeah but that's created a lot of What's the word you use earlier? The dissonance. The dissonance between <laughs> the public and the powers that be. Yeah. So when There's the a CDC too much dissonance right now. When the CDC probably has very valid points, we don't trust anything. Or there's a group it. of the America that just doesn't trust it. And then there's this: we're fighting an invisible fucking thing. No, I get it. I get that, it. You know, like it's it's tough, man, and it's tough whenever it's just tough, and it's like you want to be considerate, but you also you don't nobody knows what the fuck to do there's no there's no outline book for this no i get it you know i get it and 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 that's where I, that's where I, I i will get a little bit political i think the leadership from 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 mayor to governor to president to senator is 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 terrible there's no leadership i don't yeah. know what to do you you would think that i would know what to do well leadership is based on uh, the purpose of why you're in a leadership role and sure. you got to understand that like in my opinion um Politics and and to get in those places lost leadership qualities a long time ago. It just became who's a good speaker. I agree, sure. So when you have a good speaker, you know you got a good car salesman everywhere. Not just this president or the last president or the last fifteen. To be honest with sure. you, you know it became about selling a different narrative. And now we, you know, and for lack of a better term, like we're we're all like 
clamoring for a leader, but we didn't understand that the last one was was still the same thing, just sure. a different party. So it's, it's a it's a new bottle, old same wine. Exactly. <laughs> so we can't like point a finger when we need to point fingers at mirrors and no, just realize that we are the whole reason why this doesn't work or does work or whatever the fuck it is. Sure. You know. No, I get it. I get it. But yeah. But, so the point is how we got on this topic. Uh, when when will the, I don't know when there'll be an analog event uh, is my an analog <laughs> Good segue. on Friday. <laughs> um, I, I do hope that we could get out to Sturgis. Maybe we could do something in Sturgis uh, this coming up. Mm-hmm. That's really the only thing I, I see happening, and this multicultural ride. Yeah, but I tell you that so that if, any, if you maybe you have listeners, you can follow us on uh, Instagram at Flat Out Friday or Mama Tried, mm-hmm. um, and I think we have a, an interesting story to tell. Uh, and we have got our website we'll, of they'll be updated with some new dates. We've got some merch. We got semi loads of merch that didn't sell at the last show. Yeah, and you <laughs> know what? For all you guys listening out there, if you like the the concept behind Mon- or behind Flat Out Friday, like support them, man. Like go to the website; they can get you the shirts and shit right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there, we go through Bike Barn. There but you I'm go. I'm sure there's a link on uh, uh, old Bike Barn. And so, like, that's the thing. It's like you know what? We're all struggling to kind of navigate these waters these days so yeah man like support this motherfucker <laughs> well i appreciate that i appreciate that that oh, i can man. quit my uh, my uh, my grocery store job <laughs> man, you better you better bag those things right buddy a stock and ice cream man the best okay that's I a better had. job yeah best job i ever had is it tempting it, it, it is tempting i'll tell you this right now i'm going to confess sometimes i eat the damaged ice cream sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> and they throw them out awesome. when the box is ripped yeah. Stuff them in my pocket. Take them home. Yep. You're a thief. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, I, I really appreciate it. Dude, this is a great conversation, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, this might be one I'll listen to. Yeah, there you go. I, I'm not going to listen to it because I feel like a dumbass, but thank you for liking it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Let's, man. For, for inviting me. Appreciate it, man. All right, we're good. All right, thanks, thanks. Thanks, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I had a great time talking with Jeremy. If you guys want to support this podcast, you can do that by heading on over to our Patreon, which is at patreon.com forward slash Fast Life Garage, and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a month, and it automatically drafts from your bank account every month, and it helps support this podcast, as well as we do put out unreleased content on there from this podcast. So uh, we've got a couple drunk episodes and things like that that are much more fun and probably not appropriate to go on to uh, the mass media side of this thing. So check that out. Also, check out our sponsors, Dream Rides, John on Instagram and TeamDreamRides.com. Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and PaintHuffer.com. Fast Life 25 gets you 25 or 10% off. Check out. <laughs> Thunder Max TFI on Instagram and ShopTMax.com. Fast Life at checkout saves you 10% off your entire order. Lex and Moto on Instagram and Lexon-Moto.com. Fast Life saves you 15% off at checkout. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. On Instagram as well as SimpsonMotorcyclehelmets.com if you want to check out some badass helmets. And Electric Lighting Co. on Instagram and Nam's Custom Cycle Products.com. Offer code FL2020 saves you some shipping. Thank you guys. We're gonna be back probably I think I'm gonna release three podcasts this week. It's gonna it's gonna be a tough, it's gonna be a I'm gonna shove this shit in y'all's face because we got so many unreleased podcasts to put out there, and we just recorded a couple over the weekend. So yeah. We're going to get this stuff rolling for you guys. All right. We'll see you back. Thanks for listening. Peace.